le olvido. Going live. You're live. Hey everyone. Oh, How's good. everyone doing? Hey Happy everyone. Friday. <laughs> ¿Qué hubo, Daniela? Hola, Nicolás. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, ¿tú? Bien, bien. Súper. Hoy te voy a pintar. Today I'm going to paint Danny. Uh, a nice profile. I've, um, I thought it would be uh, a really nice painting to do after the painting, even, even though it doesn't quite make sense, but after the painting that we did of the jar, of the um, little bit of a honey jar that was uh, left at the bottom, I thought this would be interesting to paint. And the reason is kind of simple. And I thought it was fascinating when I'm going to turn my phone down. Uh, when I was when I was doing that painting, somebody commented, oh, it seems like you're lost. And we talked about it a little bit on Wednesday. And, you know, the part of being lost does not bother me at all, to be quite frank, because being lost in a painting, I think that's the natural state of a painting. Um, and probably the more comfortable you feel and the more accepting you feel with that, you know, with that thought, um, then the more confident you're going to feel when, while you're painting because you know that that thought is never going, going to abandon you. So I've kind of trained myself into understanding that, yeah, feeling lost is like, you know, trying to make a decision in life, like any decision in life where, you know, you may want to do um, one of three things and you don't really know what to pick and you don't know what the consequences are when you pick that particular option. So being doubtful in a painting, it's totally fine being lost because you have, you know, very little idea of how to traverse a painting. Totally fine too. Um, I don't think that confidence means that that notion disappears. I think that confidence means that you know that that's going to happen in, with every single painting that you do. So you, you kind of know to expect it. And, um, and I thought that was really um, wonderful that somebody pointed it out in last painting. And I hope that I, you know, when I answered, I wasn't being dismissive. And I was trying to convey that all we needed was just a little more patience to get there. It's, you know, many times we just want to see things right away. And that, um, that sort of short patience that we have um, while painting is the one that impedes us from really, really um, getting you know, to know deeply what it means to just move painting around and to create mood and just slowly develop form. So uh, painting slowly but surely is something that we also have to train ourselves to do and not just want to like, skip steps. Because some, sometimes, and I was going to say many times, but, and I really do think it happens you know, more often than not, we anticipate the painting that we want to paint. You know, we already know what's in the um, end goal, like what our end goal is, and we just want to start here and then jump to here as quickly as possible. When everything in between is like the most wonderful, you know, giving experience that ca painting can provide to you. So... Um, when we want to just hopscotch our way through a painting and just reach our final goal, you know, we're going to miss so many cool things. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. A profile usually is understood as this kind of super fine, almost like surgeon-like, you know, uh, drawing that is trying to, if you think about it, it's actually super complicated because what a profile, you know, like a perfect profile is trying to to convey is the feeling of three-dimensionality, but through a very two-dimensional abstract notion of our portrait. So it's actually super, super fascinating. And because um, it is trying to uh, portray three-dimensionality through that, you know, um, that contour line that has to be, you know, that tends to be super, super sharp, super clean, um, when we usually see, uh, see, Mm, profiles, and I'm thinking of profiles, uh, let's see, I mean, you know, Madam X from Sargent, or um, my favorite is Dennis Miller Bunker. Um, I forget 
Danny, could you look for this painting? Could you look for, um, just search Dennis Miller Bunker and profile. It's a, it's a painting of a redhead, redheaded woman. It's amazing. It's an incredible profile. But when I'm thinking of, of, you know, Bunker or Waterhouse, for example, or Holbein, for example, um, Fetchin's drawings, they're always like super, super sharp. You know, Anagoni, super, super sharp, super clean. So a lot of times that profile has to be really, you know, resolved right from the start in terms of drawing. And then, Sorry, you know, is it this one? Yeah, that okay. one. Could you, could you post that one? I mean, yep. that's not going to do me any favors because that's like one of the most beautiful profile paintings that I've ever seen. But um, it's probably my favorite profile painting, by the way. But, um, but you know, usually we, we kind of feel that we need that amount of information when we're going to do the, um, the drawing, the um, underdrawing or, you know, the, uh, the drawing that we're going to use as a study or then transfer, whatever, you know, role drawing is going to play in our painting. We really feel that that has to be resolved. So for today, mm, we're going to go a little bit against that. I mean, not against the notion of drawing, the abstract notion of drawing, because that's always going to be present in a painting. But what we're going to do is uh, reach it with paint. You know, we're going to try to get there with paint. And what I'm hoping is that my, and you'll see me uh, do this, but not quickly. You'll see me do it, you know, in a couple of hours probably. Um, what I'm going to try to do is carve my outline with my background. My background color is going to do the, um, it's going to play the role of, you know, almost like literally getting a pencil and, you know, a very sharp drawing tool and just just drawing that contour. But before that happens, we have to figure out a lot of what our painting is going to be. So, um, yeah, so that's, I don't know if you guys knew that painting. Dennis Miller Bunker is a uh, contemporary of Sargent, um, incredible American painter. And like I said, that painting is just it's it's incredible. It's amazing. I don't really know where that painting is. Could you look, Danny? Yeah. Just to see if maybe future trips we could go and 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 search for that painting. With it, maybe in Washington. I don't know. I forget. So, anyways, we're gonna start bold. Um, Danny's gonna put the uh, reference photo in a little bit. You know, after she's she's searching for. No, um, so let me. Um. Oh. You found it. No, I put. Um. Oh, a graphic that's oh, there we go. we're back. So, yeah, I'm sorry for that. No, no, no. So that's the reference for today. Yeah, I'm probably going to zoom in a little bit on that reference. Um, I, I'm going to see if I can uh, fit more of the profile. Uh, back of the neck is very nice, too. But I, I don't care so much about the uh, ponytail in the back. But I need the back of the head if I want to do the uh, neck. So... Let's see if we can do this. Um, so we're going to start just with paint, just pure, you know, no medium, pure paint. Um, and we'll see how that goes. It's going to take a little bit, I feel. But like I said at the beginning, just be patient. Let's be patient. I am patient. So I'm super, super patient. So let's see. if. So, oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. I found about the painting. Yeah. It's called Jessica. Okay. And... It is at the Museum of Fine Arts in, in Boston. In Boston? I don't remember seeing it. Yeah. Oh. oh, my God. And I've been there. Well, I've only been there once, to be completely honest. Because if you're a New Yorker, and in my heart, I always felt I was a New Yorker, you know, you don't go to Boston. I'm kidding, by the way. Um, what? Uh, I probably was looking for other stuff to see over there. Ah. Uh. You know what I remember um, just looking incessantly for over there, Danny? The um, there's an Antonio Lopez of a bathroom. Oh, the yeah. super famous one. Yeah. Well, one of the because he has a couple of those. Like the one of the sink. Yeah, you could you could look for yeah, MFA sure. MFA Boston and Antonio Lopez, and you'll see you'll see which which one. I would love to see an Antonio Lopez. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah. They're amazing. There was a show. It was it was years ago. Um, but there was a show here that brought, here in Bogota, that brought a collection of the BBVA, the bank. Yeah. And they own a ton of Antonio Lopez. And they had um, 
they had those in, in at the sh at the show. So it's really amazing. So. Because I'm trying to look for, what do you say, like MFA Boston Antonio Lopez? You're not getting anything? N I only get this. What? Like a head? Yeah, like a yeah, sculpture the, of a huge head? Sculptures. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Oh, this there we one? go. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. You want me to put it on screen? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. If there's people that are, you know, thinking about going to uh, Boston. And you know what was super sad, Danny, about that painting? What? Because I remember, um, you know, I was like, oh, I know there's, a, there's an Antonio Lopez here. I want to look for it. And I walked through what felt like a lot of the museum. And I was like, what am I doing? What am I missing? It's It's got to be around here. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. So I I see a guard eventually because I never ask people for directions. Danny knows that about me. I'm, I'm like super stubborn, super stupid. Um, and I finally ask somebody for directions and they were like, oh, yeah, let me let me take you to the painting. Because I was and I was like, no, 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 you just 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 tell me where it is. And they were like, no, it's a look. It's it, the thing is, it's a bit hidden. You know, it's a bit, you know, uh, just in a weird place. And I was like, what? What does that mean? How can a painting be in a weird kind of spot? And it was like um, in the sort of entrance to a bathroom. To, oh, yeah, to a changing me. room. Yeah, to like a baby changing you know, room. When did you told me that? When you told me about the painting of yours in the oh, competition yeah. that yeah. they also put yeah, that, in the that, bathroom? In that show, I was hanging literally like right next to the bathroom. So <laughs> that one was, yeah, I was so, I mean, that's like a shot to your ego. I but, was in a group show. It was like um, a young painters from... Porque era el, el premio del Nogal de Arte Joven. Sí, de Arte Joven del Nogal. So, sí. yeah, so I wasn't that young, but I was like at the limit that I could just send paintings to be in that show. And um, and I got in, but I was very happy because one of my students, Tatiana, Tatiana Cordova was actually like a finalist, let's say. Yeah, and I was super, was super happy cool. for her too. I was super, super happy for her. But I was in the show and I was like, okay, that's that's kind of cool. So... I'll just go see the show and I'll I'll see what my paint you know how my painting looks like, and I go through the whole show and there's no lie and I was like I'm not here like I'm literally not here what the hell, and uh, and I walk around like a second time nothing, and then eventually I was like I don't know I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna ask something and I'm just gonna say something. But I had to go to the bathroom. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go to the bathroom first and then I'll, I'll just ask. Yeah. And then I'll just ask the curator. But I'm going to but I was doubting it because I was like, I'm going to feel like an idiot. I'm going to because it's going to sound like, you know, where's you know, what gives? Where's my painting? Like I got into the show. I, I'm clearly not, ha you know, I'm clearly not not hanging. The, like you're not hanging my painting. What the hell? So go to the bathroom and as soon as i was going to go to the bathroom you had to make like a hard right like it was a small corridor to go to the bathroom and then you have to make like a hard right and i i turned you know i did that hard right and my painting is right there in that tiny little moment you know <laughs> tiny little wall before you go to the bathroom that's where my painting was hanging and i was like fucking and i didn't say anything but i was like i was just not offended, but sad, maybe. And did you invite people to... Yeah, I had invited people yeah. to see the show. But I And mean... a lot of people were like, we didn't see your painting. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but, I mean, it was a good story. Yeah, to tell well, great. Now. <laughs> oh, great, yeah. That's, so... that's what I wanted, a good story. <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, I'm fighting with proportions because I know that I want to fit that neck. So, we'll see. Yeah, but that, that, I mean, we always think that it, we're prepared for those things. Like our ego can take those shots. And um, I'm going to say that I'm, I'm pretty good at those things, like shielding myself from those things. I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm above them because no, there's, there's always going to be something that hurts you. But, um, but that day, yeah, that day I, I felt sad. I felt really, really sad. And embarrassed, like it wasn't even like pissed off. It was just kind of like embarrassed, um, because I was thinking, okay, they probably they probably felt that it was like such a nothing painting 
that they were like, oh, let's hang it in the bathroom. Like, who cares? And that hurts. I, I feel that that hurts yeah, more than just... Yeah, that's not cool because, I mean, you passed the convocatoria. How do I say that? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, my work was selected. So, yeah. so, so you would think that if it's selected, you don't... You know what I, what I noticed? And this is not me just making excuses for, for what they, whatever you know, reason they had for hanging it there. But it, there were a lot of people in there. I mean, it was a show that probably... It was a big show. But it was a show that probably had, I forget. I'm going to just say a number, but I feel I'm close. It probably had like 90 people. Yeah, but I mean, there. if they can fit 90, 90 pa paintings. But maybe they I didn't mean, realize that they could fit 90 paintings. That's so, the thing. Yeah, but maybe don't select 90 paintings. Right, right. Then, exa so. Exactly. So that's, you could argue that that's like just bad, you know, curatorship. Yeah. I guess that is that, is that a word? Mm, I don't know, but yeah, it sounded, for me it sounds it sounded good. okay, right? <laughs> yeah. Bad cura curatorial Work? practice. Yeah. No. No. Mm, one of those like... two. I'm sure that one of those two. I mean, works. I think people are getting what what you're trying to say. I know, but I'm curious because I I don't know in English. Or I don't curatory, know. maybe curatory work. No. I don't know. Am I super? I like off? curatorial. Curatorial. Okay. That's closer to what we say curatorial. So maybe. Yeah. Maybe. So maybe you can correct us. How do you say that? Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's that was a painful moment. I think I've had with well, this was before we met, but yeah. w when we met, I had the um, the one of the my aunt had, remember? Right, right, right. Yeah, Maybe yeah, you one? actually, yeah, you and your family actually helped me a ton with the uh, one going to Spain. Yeah, 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 that one. I was sad, but do you remember when I got the painting back that I was like, oh, maybe it wasn't such a good painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I remember that at the time that you weren't selected, you were like, oh, but it was so good. I mean, it was so good. And then it came back and you were like, okay, maybe it wasn't that good. And and I think that's also super good. Yeah, because I I mean, time had gone by. How, how much time? We probably like a oh. year and a half, two years, maybe. No, I think it was... 2017 no. maybe yeah, yeah yeah but after we got the painting oh yeah 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 so yeah like two years maybe yeah maybe two years that we finally got the painting back and uh when i looked at it i was like yeah maybe not yeah. you know maybe they were right but that's good because that helped you um oh like it helped yeah the and pain. i even cut the painting yeah i actually cropped the painting i cut it oh yeah because i remember that you liked something in the background was i it? like a part well it got damaged. Yeah. One one reason was that it got damaged in the um, in the shipping, and yeah. the other one was like, it's not good. <laughs> it's not that good. And finally, I was like, I really like this little bit of the painting. Yeah. So I I cropped a lot of the painting, and I was very happy. I I think that what I was hoping to say with the whole body, I could say with the portrait, and um, yeah. So so that was good. That was oh, good. I so, felt I oh, felt better. So Shade is saying curatorship is fine. There we go. Todd is saying curatorial is a real word. And Hector is saying I think it's curato curatorial. Se me salió el español. Uh, love the stories you're sharing. Yeah, so it wasn't we weren't that far off. Oh, and Anania is saying what was the painting? Uh I don't is it somewhere? I think it is. Uh, how how could we find it? Mm. Do you want me to? I can yeah, go to. Yeah, you can search. No, but I mean the one of a uh, Juan España. Yeah. yeah, you have yeah, it yeah. on Instagram, I think. You think so? Yep. Like I'm ninety nine. Could you could you put Nicolas Uribe Juan Nicolas Uribe painter Juan? I love. Don't you guys love when you have to Google stuff and it's just the stupidest? Like you feel like an idiot just putting like keywords. So. Here it is, but just oh here, is no, it all? Like, no, no, it's no, cropped. No, 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 that's cropped actually. Yeah, because I don't know if I ever. Well, you could put that detail because that's eventually what I kind of cut, really. That's what ended up. That's what the the uh, painting ended up looking like. So. So give me a minute, and I'll have it up.
Dime. That I'm trying to go super fast. Oh, you don't have to. Don't worry. Um. So there it is. But I don't think you have the one of the bathroom. Like, do you have the image of the one mm. that was shown in the bathroom? I, I, I don't probably think so. do somewhere. It's a. It was of uh, trash cans. Some trash cans I painted in Boston. Um, I think it's called Boston, actually. Of course, you know. A New Yorker being offended by the uh, trash in Boston. Oh, my God. The humanity. Um, so maybe search Nicolas Uribe Painter Boston. Yeah. I looked for that, but um, there's no results. So. No. No, that one's older. So, yeah. It's one of those paintings where I would repeat stuff. Yeah. Trash bins. I don't know. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at trash. Mm, no, nothing. Yeah, I think you know where I think it is, but that's, I mean, you don't have to, we don't have to do that. I think it's in um, my Facebook, actually. It's probably, yeah. Yeah. That's like a cemetery. Yeah, so maybe for another day, because yeah. that would take me like two hours. I, I know, I know. <laughs> it's a weird place. Yeah. Um, so they're saying, had, uh, oh no. Yeah, so Tad is saying, hey, Nicolas, I just bought, brought your painting to the framer. Can't wait to hang oh, it up. Oh, dude, Tad, you're amazing. Like, huge respect, dude. I don't think we've ever, like, exchanged. Um, well, I think we've exchanged some messages, but, um, yeah, you're a crazy good painter. I love the uh, paintings that you do with uh, little bits of collage that you kind of, like, glue on top of the painting. Those are so cool. Plus, I'm going to, uh, if you don't mind, Tad, um, Tat makes, or I don't know if you're doing them anymore, but he makes like kick-ass, like cigar, uh, pochade boxes, uh, that are like super, super cool. So if you guys want to like a little painting box for plein air, uh, look for Tad's. Could you, uh, Danny, yep. we, we could probably show the, um, Tad, Tad Ritz. Yeah. Tad so is it in the web page? I maybe? think so. I think so. Dude, I I was so um almost wanting to buy one of those cuz they are so damn cool. But um a paint box is lost on me, honestly. I I do have one. I, I just don't use them that much. And uh my plein air painting is super not good. So. so this one? Yeah, yeah. Like I could copy the link. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Sure so the red sure box. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks Danny. Oh, that's fine. Mm. Oh, so Shade was saying, oh, wow, well, it's a blo it's bloody awesome, the painting that you did. And Samara was saying, such a good painting, Nicolas. Well, thank you. Thank you. That was part of the painting, though. Um, it was a larger painting. It was a, a large, like... Uh, we'll figure... It Was it... No, not one-to-one. -one. No. I guess just a little bit, a little bit uh, smaller than life yeah, size. Yeah. But but it sitting was... pose. But it was a large painting. Yeah, it was big. It was like um, uh, uno ochenta de yeah. alto. Yeah. I, I I think it had uno ochenta, which is <laughs> six feet. Ochenta. Six feet. So around six feet tall by uno cincuenta. Era? Uno cincuenta, maybe. So five feet, six by five, maybe. If I'm remembering correctly. Hmm. So, some time ago, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name okay, but it is Julija, or I don't know. Can you help me, Nicolas? It is. J -U oh, I'll try. I'll try. J -U -L -I -J -A. Oh, maybe Julija, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. So they were asking, can I find? Or it's Julija. <laughs> maybe it's Juliana or Julio. No, because or... it's the. The last name, I guess, okay. is G O J D I N A. G O J D. Like Gosh, Gosh Dina, maybe. Maybe. Or, or Goy, like the Goy J. Dina, Sometimes maybe? it's like an I. Then. Yeah. They were asking, can I find the find the reference somewhere? So we're now we don't post the link for the Dropbox anymore, but if you want, I can make it a little bit bigger um in the screen and it's going to be on screen all the time that we are live so 
if you want, you can paint along with us. Yeah, or just um, like grab a. Could you make it just a a little bit bigger? Yep. Like for a little bit, um, maybe like a minute, so that they can screen grab it if they want. Okay. And uh, so and then we'll we'll. Whoa. Look at that big, big Danny. <laughs> oh, then uh, now yeah, I can do like terrible. now now I can do like side size. I feel, <laughs> um, which I've never done by the way. Yeah, so maybe you can do a screenshot. Yeah, Danny's like, please quickly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That looks um. You look amazing. Super detailed. No, you look great. Love your pores. Okay, so we're going back to the tiny Danny. Oh, you gave them like no time. Yeah, that was. But you know, I mean, you can pause. Oh, that was good. You that can was pause good. the no, video. That was good. I mean, that was <laughs> that was tough for Danny. Um, Honestly, all you need is like a second. So. Uh, so, eh, William Felipe había dicho, uy, sería re chévere alcanzar a pintar el Mickey del saco, pero creo que no alcanza. No, 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 me concentré más Ay, en no, el... Yeah, me, sorry. me concentré más en el... William, me concentré un poquito más como en el cuello, parte de atrás de la cabeza, tope de la cabeza, y, y en lo que... Va a ser como ese, ese dibujo que, que tengo que hacer de, del perfil, como llegar hacia ese dibujo. Ese es como el, el objetivo hoy. Entonces, de pronto, pues, sí, la parte de abajo hubiera sido como chévere, pero creo que ese saco tuyo de Mickey ya lo pinté una vez, ¿te acuerdas? Creo que sí, pero muy chévere que William cogió de una que era un saco. De un saco. Un saco, un saco pues. Sí, verdad. Que el saco era un saco. <risa> era un Mickey. Es increíble, William. <risa> Súper, o sea, un águila, Están un halcón, un halcón, William el halcón. Que era un Mickey. Súper observador. Ya, que era un Mickey, porque mira lo que se alcanza a ver. No, pues la oreja gigante no, negra perdón. y los dos ojos. Link. Mi primito me ha visto con el saco y no identifica a Mickey. Mm, ¿Cuántos años tiene Mickey? tu primito? Cuatro. Gracias. La respuesta súper rápida. Súper rápida esa respuesta. <ríe> eh... So, Rajita is asking... Hi, Rajita. Was that painting in the OPL book? The one uh, of Juan? I think it yes, was. Yes, yes, in the... Uh, like, but in the, the painter book. Right. Not in the OPL right. book. Yeah, so in the accompanying one that was not the sketchbook. Uh, and in the Regina. big one, I was... Ah, uh, no, not in the big one. No? no, no, no. Oh, okay. No, because that's, that's why, you know, we eventually did that um, second edition. Like re-edition, yeah. Right, right, because um, there were some paintings in that book that were not uh, part of the big one. And I guess in the, in the interim between, you know, editions, um, that's when that painting got done. So, yeah. So that's not going to be in the, in the big one, but it's uh, in the uh, smaller one. Smaller one was... Oh, yeah. So, Rajita just said, uh, oh, that painting you cut is in the OPL book. Just found it in mine. Oh, look at her. Look at Rajita flexing. <laughs> um, uh, uh. So, I'm looking for more questions. Oh, so, Chris... Chris Herrera or Chris Herrera is saying, have you ever considered doing reference packs? Re mm. Reference packs? Yeah, like a, like packs of images. With oh, reference. oh, people usually charge for those too. I mean, in terms of like making a pack and charging for it, no, for sure not. Uh, in terms of sharing a bunch of Dannys <laughs> to the inner, to the no, world. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. No. But I mean, you, as we said, you can also you can always um, work from the images that we're sharing with you guys. And we stopped um, sharing the images in the Dropbox Dropbox link because they're always like um, Samu, Fer, yeah, uh, your mom, me, which is which and, is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... but I mean, I don't know if they're always comfortable with the image being online all the time, like available to everyone. So Yeah, so so my 
my kids, both of them, both Samo and Fed, or obviously Danny is is a bit more comfortable. But you know, sometimes they'll be like, "Okay, my dad took a, like a dumb photo," but you oh, know, but Fairy is happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's happy because I'm painting it. But um, yeah, but I don't know how happy she is that you know she's if she's like all over. Yeah, but also she's super happy when she sees a painting of her from someone else. Yeah, yeah. The one paintings... that you guys share. That's right. super cool. Yeah, paintings will make her super happy. <laughs> so they're saying the Danny bundles for the packs. Yeah, no. I, I wouldn't know how to pose even. Like, could you imagine doing a pack? It's a uh, super bad, um, just bad hand poses. <laughs> yeah. 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 And um como digo como medio pestañeo. Oh yeah, Danny uh blinks one eye blinks at like half the speed of an of no, the other no. eye. No, no. You're, now you're making me sound like if I was No, no, no judgment. No judgment, no, I think. I don't. I mean, the thing is that <laughs> when I have a camera in front, I get a little bit nervous. So I try to blink less <laughs> mm -hmm. and With that's always eye. no 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 which is totally fine again because you're like like keep the pose and i'm always super nervous to keep the pose so i try not to blink and then something happens and i just blink an eye before the other so that's your Nicolas fame takes... <laughs> that's your famous painting that's uh yeah. that was the the First, that was the first time I painted you. Yeah, no, that that wasn't. Remember when you go when you went to my house to make the painting of oh, the rainbow? Oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah, that one's that that those no, that I didn't like. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't. I mean, no, no, no. Those I like. Th I like them a lot. Yeah, those are those are cool paintings, but um, but I felt like that one was was kind of like one of those first times that I was able you know to what? paint you. I think that which was... is like the worst depiction of you too. I was sneezing because I had the flu. <laughs> no, so, that's new to me. No, oh, Nicolas, you oh, remember it's that? To me, by no, the way. no. I uh, thought you looked plenty healthy that day. No, now you're just playing because I had the I had the flu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> COVID, COVID before COVID. Yeah. Um. Oh, and also, I think that you're thinking about the painting because I think it was. Maybe I don't know if the first one, but one of the first painting you did in the sketchbook, remember? Yeah, that was one of the first paintings of the sketchbook. You're I right. would say it was the first one, if I'm not wrong. Um but, 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 Yeah, because but, but. I remember that after that we had a talk and you told me that you were super happy with the sketch like the sketchbook format. Yeah. And that you wanted to try to do something with that so yeah. i think it was the first painting you did yeah i think that's still my my favorite painting of the whole yeah. sketchbook project i mean there's there's some in there of of samu and fer that are amazing uh but as a painting i mean i'm not trying to attach like sentimentality to it uh because if it's sentimental anything that has my mother or danny or fer or samu Th those are all going to win, so th I can't even pick. Um, but in terms of painting, yeah, I think that one. You know, when we when we said goodbye to those paintings in the uh, in the fireplace. Oh, that was a that, hard. That one was hard. A hard goodbye. Yeah, yeah, that one was tough for me. Like that one, I felt it. That one was where my mind was telling me, "You are detached. You are detached." Was and it then, the like, last? No, 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 no. I tried to like do it super quickly because. You know, if it was the last one, I probably could have. I probably was like, well, not this one. <laughs> Let's be detached, but not with this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, that one, that one was tough. I remember like I was I thought I was ready. And then my my heart was like, oh, like, no, not this one. And but that's when I knew that the exercise was cool. Like the exercise of detachment was good because if you don't feel anything, then, yeah, who cares about like throwing stuff away that you don't care about. Um, but it has, you have to feel something. You have to feel a sense of, of like, oh my, or, or doubt. Or like, why am I doing this? Like, what is, what's going on? Why am I doing this? Um, yeah, I certainly, I certainly felt that I feel. Um, 
So, Rosalie. Your head is getting oh. bigger. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm just complaining. <laughs> you scared me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just getting bigger. I just feel that I'm so bad. By the way, this is not why. This is the reason that I don't do like Barg drawing. I can't do it. I really can't. I'm just not good at it. And, um, and like right now it feels good, but it's just getting bigger. Like my plan was, was hopefully to have, you know, space for the back of the head to go down and then just a little bit of the, uh, the ponytail. I mean, it's fine, but I just don't want to be content with, with saying, okay, not what I wanted, but yeah, cause this is getting lower. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So no, that's good. Cause this is nice, but it's not what I wanted. So, um, it's going to be like fair, green fair all over again. <laughs> I yeah. can sense it. Yeah, I can feel it. So mm. let's take the uh, Band-Aid. You know, let's pull that Band-Aid out really quickly. Well, this is not doing yeah. anything. I anything thought I was going to be like, all. let's scrape <laughs> it all. Yeah. And this is like, oh, my God, it's looking better. Um, yeah, no, no, no. No, we have, to, we have to fight for the painting that we want to do. So, yeah, so let's get rid of that. It's probably smaller. Come on. Come on. So when we were talking about the um, reference packs, yeah, Rosalind said, "Danny in the Ernie chair cover shot." <laughs> oh, that was yeah, that that was a chair off the street. Oh, and by I'm the way. sorry, that was my idea. That remember? was yeah, and the chair was super funky, yeah. like really funky. Yeah, because because it was a a chair that someone led in the street. Yeah, they like for the, the garbage yeah. car to yeah, to but you could tell up. that it it was. You know, it, it had been a couple of days in the street. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was yeah. pretty funky. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, so Todd says, I spent ages looking for references. Your still lives <laughs> could be shared without being weird, honeypots and beanbags. It's it. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's totally, that's totally fine. But why do you feel it's difficult to find reference? Like, I would ask that first. I, I'm not trying to find a way to not share reference. I'm just very curious to know why is it that you feel that it's tough? Because you could really paint anything. And also, if we're being 100% honest, um, this picture... We get our reference from reference packs. No, no we're not. No, we don't. <laughs> That's this not is not really Danny. Me, yeah. <laughs> this is not Danny. Um, we took that pi picture like maybe 10 minutes before yeah. we started recording. So it's never like super planned or anything like that. So, I mean, I think that everyone could try to take their own reference and be super happy with the references they get, don't you think? Yeah, as practice, you know, as, as part of painting practice, for sure, yeah. Mm. It was looking so nice. It was like a nice start, and then it was gone. Eh, Julio Melto dice, Uh, entre justo que estás desarmando la figura y no entiendo inglés. Ja, ja, ja. Si quieres, puedes explicar <laughs> no, un poquito sí, sí, sí. de lo que... No, es que, es que me dio bronca porque la, la proporción estaba ya muy grande. O sea, quería que me cupiera me cupieran como unas, y había decidido eso desde el comienzo, y yo me termino como emocionando mucho cuando trato de modelar la forma, y lo que siempre me termina pasando, y en particular con retratos, es que pues si veo un retrato, yo creo que lo quiero hacer más grande, o sea, si tuviera este espacio para hacer un retrato y lo tengo que hacer así, voy a quererlo hacer así, o sea, y si tengo este espacio y lo tengo que hacer así, lo quiero hacer como... Eh, tres cuartos de la página y si me dan el, la fachada de un edificio yo creo que quiero hacerlo como fachada y media entonces es, es más como no sé una falta de control mía o, o una respuesta mmm, un poco irresponsable a, a mi como mi sensibilidad supongo como que me dejo llevar por lo que me atrae mucho y entonces pierdo Eso está bien, pero hay veces pierdo, mmm, pierdo como el norte y pierdo lo que quería hacer cuando estaba, pues cuando decidí pintar algo. Entonces, toca encontrar como un punto medio. Entonces me dio, me dio rabia, pero aquí vamos a, eventualmente lo vamos a encontrar, seguro. So, 
when you were talking about the green fair painting yeah bryce liston says green fair is one of your best oh thank, thank you that's awesome thank you thank you so much mm. that's super cool and talking about references todd said i guess i'm too pre precious with references looking for decent light it's etc yeah but all you need for light uh todd is uh, a window and if you don't have a window which is totally fine uh just a lamp you know a bulb don't even call it a lamp so it doesn't sound sophisticated just a, a light bulb that's all you need and with that you can make so much with like single single light um a single light as your as your um as your light condition is absolutely perfect if you have a window with you know north light or any light honestly and if it's too much light if you feel it's too much light here's a super cool tip just grab some newspaper well some bike just is out you know <laughs> i don't know if they can hear that uh maybe but uh yeah just grab some newspaper cover your whole window and just leave like a tiny bit like a tiny little window of of light so let's say maybe a 9 by 12 11 by 14 kind of little window and that's going to be your light source and you're going to see it's amazing it's absolutely amazing um squares yeah he's saying i have a window ciao ciao squares <laughs> It's Italian. It's Italian. Yeah, yeah. Italian. Um, they're saying I have a window. I don't have the subject. My girlfriend <laughs> hate to be my model. So you can paint yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you're always you. You always have yourself. So. And Todd, uh, says thanks. Maybe I'm just very very good at procrastinating, uh, about taking the references. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, start with something super, super simple and you'll see that you can find, um, you can find immense pleasure in just painting something that's, that's really, really simple, like a interesting subject, but it could also be like a simple subject. It could be like a, like an apple or like a peach, whatever. And, um, so it doesn't have to have like complex forms or shapes or turn in space in like really weird ways. Um, yeah. And just a single light and you're going to be just fine just fine promise um they're also saying i don't know how to say the username so yeah it's sound it out sound it out you no i don't know how oh my god that was it's that was g u i w g u i w si es que creo que son yeah yeah so they're saying the can you reference group is always nice when i can't find anything to oh paint. yeah i've done a couple of paintings so yeah 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 if you're part of that telegram group telegram is that yeah yeah I um think so. yeah that's super cool people are like really really generous with um with the photographs there so mm, and they were also saying when you burn the paintings i felt it too haha <laughs> that must have been hard as hell um it wasn't as hard as it seems to be honest i mean because i was taught i had been i almost knew that that's what i was gonna do way before i ended the project so maybe my mind was ready for a long time and i think that when you're ready then you know things that seem super difficult they you know they cease to be so so yeah but but i'm also you know human and i also like i just said i also really really enjoyed many of the paintings that were there um i worked really hard at painting many of the paintings that were there and um yeah it was it's difficult it's, it's always difficult to say goodbye to something you care about so yeah it was it was weird, but I think after we did it, it just wasn't weird. Like it was over, and as soon as it was over, it was kind of fun. It was cool, and and that was that was it. We never did it for, by the way, because I, I I get asked this many many times. We never did it to make a story on Instagram. We never did it to, like, it was a story. The only reason it was there was because I pretty much share everything. I mean, I shared when my father passed away. I share when I don't get into a, an art competition. So 
no, this was just part of sharing and sharing the good and sharing the bad or sharing the moments where you're insecure about something. Um, so this was just another, you know, moment that I wanted to share, but, but that was, that was it. I mean, there's nothing, trust me, like I've told this before, but, um, I got a couple of offers of people interested in, in, in the, um, the sketch in the book. sketchbooks yeah. and, um, you know, if you want to see it that way, it was like literally burning money. So there's no amount of like likes or clicks that would have made up for the money that uh, we could have gotten. So, yeah. So it was it was beyond that. It was bigger than that. It was and it was something super personal, too. So, yeah. So Irvin Torres was saying. Dani, you speak really great English and Nicolas. Dani. No, sobre todo con lo nerviosa que me pongo. No. And Nicolas, let me tell you, you speak native Spanish and native English levels. That's really hard to do. Usually people speak one way better than the other. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mm, William Felipe dice, uy, sí, cuenten esa historia como, ay, no. ¿Cuál? Como fue la primera vez que Nicolás pintó a Dani, yo ya sé qué bobada va a decir él. No, la primera, la primera primera. Sí, cuando tú fuiste a mi casa. Ah, pero pues puedo decir. Pues sí, lo que, a ver, yo voy a contar mi parte. Pues cuenta tu parte si eh. quieres, pero yo también puedo decir lo que, lo que yo vi, lo que presencié. No, pero cuento mi parte, va a sonar peor. Bueno, cuando el celador. No. Avisó que Nicolás... Vigilante, vigilante ¿Cuándo? también de pronto. ¿Sí? Cuando sí, el vigilante... El celador, no sé si... Perdón, pero así, pues, o sea, no lo... No, 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 no es, no, 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 sino Bogotá. que no sé si la gente entienda, como el vigilante del edificio. Sí, eh, me avisó, pues, timbró para avisar que Nicolás estaba en la portería, yo estaba, eh, como digo... En el baño. Haciendo pipí, como digo? No, pues ya lo dijiste. Ya dijiste, bueno, estaba en el baño. Hubieras podido decir, estaba en el baño. No, porque o sea, sé, no, no sé por qué te fuiste. Te eso, fuiste súper específica de no una. Porque eso habría Hubieras podido evitar todo cosas, este momento de no. la conversación. Todo este momento se podía evitar. Hubieras el dicho, caso es que yo estaba en el baño. Salí corriendo a abrirle a Nicolás. Y pues sí, o sea, salí corriendo. Ese es el punto. Ahora cuenta tu, tu parte. Y cuando me abrió... La puerta. Pero ahí no te diste cuenta, tú te diste sí. cuenta cuando yo me Ahora, senté pero en vengan, la sala. les digo una cosa. Yo soy un, pues quisiera, no, no, iba a decir quiero creer, pero es la verdad, yo creo. Yo soy un pintor súper respetuoso, súper sí, sí, sí. respetuoso. Pero lo que pasa es que ahí tú y yo ya estábamos como pues, hablando. Sí, estábamos hablando y pues sí, sí, pero no, pero todavía no, todavía no, no pues, habíamos sí, salido igual... y no, no. Y, <risa> y pues yo igual soy, yo, o sea. Yo era súper respetuoso y estaba yendo a, la ca a tu casa, o sea, a la casa de tus papás. Sí, sí. O sea, yo tenía eso súper claro. Entonces, yo, por ejemplo, muchas veces si voy a pintar a alguien, si le pido a alguien que si me posa, y yo, por ejemplo, con, con personas, las pinturas que he hecho desde hace ya mucho tiempo, yo no le pido a, a las personas que se desnuden. Yo cuando hago desnudos, sí, no, normalmente no, no. trabajo con modelo. Con modelo. Sí, como eh, en un taller o... Y si pinto un desnudo es porque ya después conocí a una persona lo suficiente, o sea, estoy en una relación con una persona y me siento como tranquilo, pero, pero del comienzo yo nunca pido como, ay, hola, soy Nicolás Uribe, ¿será que te puedes empelotar para que te pinte? No, no. Bueno, pero no. continúa, te fuiste súper yo... por la No, ramas. no, no, porque pues yo trato de ser respetuoso, entonces yo siempre digo, oye, pues eh, si puedo pasar hoy y pues y yo siempre trato como de curarme y entonces le digo a la gente... Pues si quieres puedes estar con tu novio, tu novia, tu pareja, tus papás, no, o sea, yo siempre le digo, no, pues que haya alguien y no pasa nada para que no haya como nada raro. Y Daniela me abrió la puerta con la cremallera del pantalón abajo. No, la mitad, porque la cremallera de no, Nicolás, del pantalón fue, obviamente abajo. yo estaba súper apenada la... porque uh -huh. después sí, claro. sí. yo le dije, "Ay, sigue a la sala, ¿cómo estás?" Bueno, y Cremallera me iba a sentar, abajo. No, me iba a sentar, ¿cómo se dice? Eh, con las piernas. Así. No sé, con las piernas, con la cremallera no, abajo. Ay, como con las piernas cruzadas y vi que tenía la cremallera abajo. Sí. Y pues yo dije, pues ya hice el oso. Y yo le dije, ay, qué pena tenía la cremallera abajo. Y me la subí y él como, sí, no. Eh, y te pusiste un poquito rojo y fue como, sí, no, pero pues tranquila, no pasa nada. Yo no iba a decir nada. Y sí. 
Sí, sí muy no incómodo. Sé por qué estamos contando muy incómodo. Esto. Eh, muy incómodo. Sí, 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 sí. Y eh, voy a buscar la primera pintura que hiciste mm. para ponerla y poder cambiar de tema rápido. Pues tú fuiste la que, <risa> o sea, tú fuiste la que dijiste que estabas en el baño orinando <risa> ya. y también quisiste que yo hablara. <risa> a mí a veces te me olvida que esto queda sí. en internet. O sea, Fer, en, Fer en cinco años. Sí, no. O oh, mis papás escuchando dirán, sí, sí. no está. Sí. No, y yo le dije a Dani, primero invítame a almorzar, o sea. No, pero eso sí me lo dijiste después molestando cuando molestando, ya estábamos saliendo. Un chiste, sí, sí, un chiste. Eh... Esas invitaciones así no, no. Sí, no, qué vergüenza. Mm, no sé si alguien esté diciendo algo. No creo. Eh, María Elisa dice, jajaja, ja, ja, amo que compartan esta historia en vivo. Sí, yo, sí. María Elisa, yo no sé qué tan arrepentida estoy sí. de haberla contado. Tú que eres mucho más privada que yo. Sí, es que Pero a veces no, se me olvida Yo te que... copio, yo te copio. Si tú quieres hablar, yo, co yo te copio, yo sigo. Y Julio Melto dice, jaja, ja, qué gran comienzo. Gabriel Pozo pone una carita riéndose. Sí, terrible. Eh... Marcelo Peralta dice priceless. <laughs> um, so I think I was able to um, to slowly, or I'm I'm slowly uh, readjusting my proportion without like super losing my drawing. I mean, we lost a little bit of the drawing, and it looked like a nice painting initially, but. Um, if we're never willing to sacrifice, you know, moments of our paintings, um, we're never going to be able to explore how confident we are while painting. Because we're always going to feel like, oh, I was able to paint this, but it was just like, you know, the gods were shining down upon me, but I, I can't, I did it once, but I can't do it twice. No, not at all. Um, when the truth is, if you painted it once, you could paint it, you know, you should be able to paint it. As many times as you want. Mm, sí, entonces esta era la imagen. Ahí la puse. ¿Cuál linda? De la primera pintura. Mm, ¿Qué hiciste mía? Sí, 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 sí. Ah, es chévere, es chévere. Sí, es chévere. Sí, es chévere. Y... So that's the... Danny's uh, sharing the... What was the first time I painted her? Yep. Yep. Um, so... Uh, so... They're saying, Arman is saying, hi, you're so talented, Nicolás. Can I ask who is she? Um, she is me. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. She's Danny, hey. my partner. Yeah, so I'm Danny. <laughs> is this us? So this is pretty much us then. Yeah. I think they were asking for the reference. For your like, number? Oh. No, I like <laughs> Um... Sergio, Sergio, mm -hmm. is saying we get really nice light in the morning with coffee. Is it weird to paint from a selfie? I'll do dramatic faces. LOL. No, you could, no, you could paint anything you want. That's totally fine. I think you've, oh, you've God. also painted um selfies. I've yeah yeah for sure. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I did my pouty mouth. Um. I'm not getting my drawing right. I'm really mad. I was I mean, I'm 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 going for the bigger mass thing and there's an atmosphere, I'm sure there's and there's a, like a you know, the semblance of a a profile, but I'm not getting what I want. Um let's see. Oof. So Okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it I'll give myself how much how much time probably 10 more minutes and if i can't get to where i want in like 10 more minutes i'm just gonna draw some lines because you know it's gonna be frustrating and i'm not that good like i i can tell you guys like oh i'm gonna try to do x y or z and sometimes it's like okay that's beyond my ability so so tia yeah. is saying YouTube recommended this video to me. May I know who this artist is? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so he's Nicolas Uribe. <laughs> and yeah, also, if you want. I'm, I'm Nicolas Uribe. So I'm. Can you 
Tell I'm us a, a little bit about yourself, Nicholas. Oh, thank Nicolas. you. Thank you, Danny. So that's the voice of uh, my partner, Danny. So this is our channel. Uh, and uh, how can I describe myself like super quickly? I am both. So I am. What am I? I'm a, am I Colombian American? Born or, in the United States. Or but American Colombian American Colombian. And Colombian. Hard. No, I'm Colombian. So yeah. I would I would always say first Colombian. So. Uh, so I'm Colombian and I'm a painter. I've painted my whole life. I went to school to study painting and then I did short, a very short time. Uh, I spent a short time illustrating. Uh, that's my love still, I feel. You know, I, I really di like narrative in painting, um, storytelling in painting, but it sort of devolved into into just, um, I don't know, like a willingness to paint. It didn't matter, you know, at some point, it just didn't matter what I was painting, you know, if there was a story tied to that painting. Um, it, none of that mattered, and it was just, it just became about painting. And for the past couple of years, I think that that's been my life, just trying to understand what that means, that if you divorce yourself from the sort of the resulting painting, like what's left. Um, and yeah, so I've been exploring that, like um, what is left, you know, after you decide that the object of painting doesn't quite matter that much. That's what I've been doing. It sounds really weird when I try to summarize it um, in a somewhat succinct manner. But yeah, that's that's been the last couple of years, I feel. Yeah, and also if you want, um, his username for Instagram is on screen, so you can check him out. And we have a what a web page also oh, that yeah, serves as a star page. as a storefront. Oh, that's... I should do a, yeah. a graphic for that too. Yeah, so if you want to check it out, it's our painted lives dot com. So, so it's I'm the same as the uh, same as our YouTube channel. So there you go. Oh, and they're saying thanks for the reply. No, sure, sure. Yeah, and, and we're happy that you joined us. Mm. So they're saying, um, Anania is saying, detail or atmosphere, I always pick at my drawings and ruin it by focusing on specific details with my little brush. How can I improve? Well, Ananya, so, you know, bigger brushes. I mean, the, and these are not that big. If you look at Benjamin, Ben Bjorklund, I mean, they're house painting brushes. So, yeah, this is, um, I guess I could go bigger. I, I guess I would still feel comfortable going bigger. Um, but yeah, and keep them for as long as you want, for as long as you can also. But that's that's key. Big Big brushes means that, the tool itself is forcing you to see bigger relationships, bigger planes, you know, b bigger plane shifts. Um, so there is, you actually have to make uh, a strange effort, like almost like an unnatural effort if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to focus on smaller detail. So again, tools are going to be your best ally and um, they're going to help you kind of not uh, be prematurely attracted by those things. I would say that that's the proper way of describing it. Um, Charles Ramirez says, Nicolás, ¿prefieres el papel o la tela? Uy, en este momento, papel. Pero voy a tener que volver a pintar en tela. Entonces, en ese momento también, yo creo que eh, haré una, o tendré como una reintroducción a la tela, que suena ridículo, ¿no? Porque llevo pintando en papel como menos de dos años y he pintado en tela, no sé, 20. Entonces, eh, eh, no tendría por qué ser nada um, como extraño. No lo tendría que sentir como algo extraño. Pero sí siento que va a ser una especie de reunión. Y, y voy a tener como que redefinir o reinterpretar la manera como como entendía ese, ese soporte. Vamos a ver, es interesante. Estoy como, 
estoy ansioso por, eh, o expectante, más bien, por ver cómo, cómo siento esa, esa reunión. De pronto puede ser como, ah, sí, o sea, <ríe> es tela y ya. O sea, no, no, no tenía tampoco tanto misterio volver a, a, a ese soporte. Pero, pero creo que va a ser un poquitico más complejo que eso. Um, Liad says... Hey, Liad. Nicolás, do you like how you paint now compared to your older paintings? I like you more moody, atmospheric paintings now more. Oh, thank you. I mean, there's some paintings, I guess, back in the days, back in the day that were moody and atmospheric also. Um, because that effort has been part of me for a very long time. I think that in, in trying to... Um, In trying to develop my own painting, I've I recognized, you know, throughout many years, throughout the years that I've been painting, that one of the things that was always there was was atmosphere, was just this heavy kind of um, I don't know, foreboding, you know, gloomy atmosphere, like drab, dreary, you know, however you want to call it. But uh, it, it's it's always been there, so. Um, I've, I've just, I've noticed that I'm more, I'm just far more conscious of it now and I'm far more familiar with it now in the sense that I can, um, feel comfortable and say, okay, this is me. You know, I think years ago it was just like, um, yeah, that's, that's me trying to gain a bit of, a bit of knowledge as to who I am as a painter. And I think now I can just say, yeah, this is me for sure as a painter. Like, I, I don't have to be apologetic about it. I don't have to explain myself. I don't feel I have to explain myself at all. It's just like, yeah, this is what I love about painting. I love atmosphere. I mean, at the core of my painting, there is this desire to just paint not things, but the air surrounding things maybe. And I know that that sounds like, like super hard to grasp. It's even hard to grasp for me. Even when I say it, I feel that, you know, that's not something that I can visualize, but perhaps that's kind of why it's cool because you, you know, it's so hard to visualize it that you can't, um, that you, you understand that the only moment where you're going to be able to, to try and go for it, to try and grasp it as an idea, as a concept is through the act of painting. So yeah, but thank you. Yeah. Um, and as far as thinking that I'm better, I don't know. I don't know. Different, maybe different. I, I try not to see things as better or worse anymore. Um, so maybe different. Um, there, because there are a few paintings that I did, you know, years ago. That even right now I look at them and I'm like, I don't even know how I painted that. That looks really good. And I just, I just don't feel I have the ability to paint that anymore. To paint like that anymore. So. So yeah, so I'm I'm happy, proud of myself, but also kind of surprised about some of the things that that um that I was able to achieve because you know they they certainly do feel like from a different painter nowadays. Um, esta pregunta sí. está super Uf. como relacionada con ah. lo que acabas de decir que sí. que ibas a que estabas no sé. pensando. Pensé que ibas a decir está, está super chévere. Densa. Sí, ah, okay. súper densa. A mí me gustan sí. las preguntas así, súper densas, como difíciles de responder. Si quieren no, preguntarme cosas bien. así, me encanta. Eh, Ignacio Casas dice, ¿se siente representado por todas las etapas de su obra o se siente distante de algunas que ya no lo representen como pintor? Uh, de pronto las, las de más joven. O sea, eh, cuando, por ejemplo, estaba, estaba mostrando en Estados Unidos pintura al como comienzos de comienzos a mediados del 2000 yo estaba mostrando una galería en Boca Ratón en la Florida y, y era pintura pues uf, era pintura muy superficial llamémosla así o sea por ser como generosos conmigo mismo eh, y, y ese tipo de pintura no sé yo era de pronto muy joven me estaban ofreciendo muy buen dinero, además dinero como que yo después eventualmente sentía que yo no me merecía. Eh, 
pero, pero pues para mí era súper atractivo decir, uy, pues yo estoy en esta galería, así no sea... O sea, yo pensé que yo iba a terminar pintando en Nueva York y terminé pintando en Boca Ratón en la Florida. O sea, la diferencia es gigante. Pero, pero, pero igual podía como justificarme a mí mismo y decir, no, no, pero pues bueno, esta es una galería chévere porque era un espacio súper bonito eh, y, y el tenían un mercado absurdo y esto era como antes de que se reventara esa burbuja de arte, entonces la gente estaba pagando lo que fuera por arte. Eh, y, y pues me fue muy bien en esa etapa, pero pues nunca estuve como orgulloso de lo que estaba haciendo, nunca, nunca. Por ahí hay algunas pinturas, una que otra que, que de verdad me gusta, que sentía que las estaba haciendo yo como para tratar de sentirme mmm, como tranquilo conmigo mismo, no sé, como que no estaba vendiendo mi alma tanto, pero pues era una pintura entre 20 que estaba haciendo, entonces pues tampoco era como tan, tan consistente yo con, con tratar de, de responder a, honestamente a, a lo que era mi sensibilidad, pues. Pero era joven también, o sea, la verdad es que estaba muy joven y seguramente todas esas cosas que eran atractivas acerca del mercado del arte y, y de las que yo ahora soy muy crítico, pues me eran muy atractivas en ese momento también a mí. Entonces aprendí, aprendí el valor de las cosas en ese momento, porque yo sentía que me estaban sobrevalorando. O sea, yo sentía que yo no tenía por qué ser visto como, como un pintor tan bueno, como un pintor maduro, cuando realmente estaba comenzando y que... Me sentí siempre muy incómodo cuando la obra, la obra mía la, la mostraban con precios que no, pues que yo sentía que eran absurdos, que eran infladísimos. Entonces, esa etapa, digamos que la recuerdo con cariño porque fue el comienzo, pero también la recuerdo como, como, como una etapa pues no muy, no muy chévere dentro de mi proceso porque, porque sí fue, no sé. Yo creo que yo no, no estaba listo como para darme cuenta de lo que era como un mercado del arte y pues me tocó súper rápido tomar muchas decisiones acerca de mi trabajo y, y pienso que si hubiera seguido en, en, ese, como en, en ese circuito, pues seguramente económicamente me hubiera ido muy bien, pero pues yo estaría como muy descontento conmigo mismo, entonces hubiera sido muy difícil. I'm Eric. Is asking what size are your brushes? So What let me see, because I don't really know. Um, eight. So this is an eight. This is a seven. Da Vinci. So Da Vinci bristle seven. This is a filbert. A what are they called? Um, ivory filbert from uh, Rosemary. That's a eight. That's a what? Yeah, eight. And this one is an eight also. So yeah, so pretty good. I mean, they're not, I would say medium-sized brushes, I would say. They're not big by any means. Um, JC Arana is saying, how can I avoid oversaturated skin tones? The colors mm. look perfect when I mix them, but they never work when I paint in, paint it on the canvas. Any advice? Mm. Mm. I mean, that's like a super specific um, issue. Uh, what was their name? I'm sorry. Jay-Z, J-C. So, Jay-Z. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a super, super specific issue, I feel. Mm, but ideally, if I have to be honest, dude, if it looks good here, it should look good here. Like, if, if your mixing in here is coherent within the context of your palette, and I'm not saying palette as the colors that we paint with, but you know, the color relationships that you're already trying to establish within your palette. Like, if those work here, they should work over here. So I would say that there, there's something kind of missing there where you feel like there's a disconnect happening where you feel that, like, you're doing a good job here in the palette, but then as soon as you apply it, something happens and it doesn't work. That shouldn't really be happening. So... First thing I would tell you is we have to look into that because that shouldn't be the case. Because many times when you struggle with a painting, like 
when we struggle, um, sometimes the painting is just a, you know, super easy one-to-one -one relation to the decisions that we put in our, in our palette. So let's say if I'm doing a workshop and somebody is favoring, let's say, I don't know, the warmness, uh, the warm um, kind of part of the uh, temperature that's available in your palette, or they are making a hue dominant in your palette. Like let's say they are using way too much cat red, for example. If you see the painting, you would be like, wow, you're using way too much cat red. And if you go to the palette immediately after that, all you're gonna see in the palette is a ton of mixes that are um, affected by cat red. So what happens here is gonna show up here. Like this is the consequence of all the thought process that goes in here. So, I mean, and, and this is me saying it, and I'm a student of, of Steve Assell, and his palettes in here make no sense because he mixes mostly in, in the uh, surface of his painting. So, you know, I'm not saying that that's, that that's a rule, but I, if I could generalize, and I hate generalizing, but if I could generalize just a little bit for just a second, just trying to prove a point, I would just say that, yeah, what happens here has to be um, consequential to what you're doing, to what you're wanting to um, happen, to what you want to see happening in your painting. It just has to. It can't be. They can't be divorced. They can't. So there's, there's, there should be a reason why you feel they're divorced. But you know what's the crappy thing about this? That um, I would have to see you paint. I would have to see your paintings, but then most what's most helpful is i would have to see you paint to give to be able to give you a hand with that so um also i don't know if this helps yep maybe you can correct me if it doesn't no but, go ahead um if you use a sub subtone like undertone in your palette that matches the right so danny's speaking about this like the tone of your palette yeah yeah, yeah. that yeah. matches the tone in the surface that you're gonna paint um you could you could make like um uh, like you could be sure that what you're mixing is what's going to translate in the surface so maybe that could also help right yeah i i don't do that i used to do that but i'm not saying i'm above it or i'm just like oh i'm so good that i can do no no no, no. it's always kind of weird but um i just got used to it so i'm using my palette that has a patina of old paint because I love painting on top of old paint. Um, but my surface is super light. So, you know, I'm never going to quite see relationships like exactly translate into my surface. But I'm, I'm, famili I'm so familiar with my colors. I, I feel I should say that. I'm so, so familiar with my regular palette that I feel think I can make adjustments like while I'm painting, like on the fly. I feel that, that that's, um, that's one of the cool things about just having a, a, a palette that you're super familiar with. That's... Yeah. But, but I think that when people are yeah, if you're getting like out, a little bit right. lost with it, yeah, it could help you like do a perfect, um, translation of the mixing and the color applying. So, right. Right. So if, let's say if you have a, for example, let's say if you have a value six gray palette or a value, you know, five gray palette, if you prime or tone your surface with yeah. value, you know, five or six acrylic paint, then beautiful, you're golden. Like that's going to help a lot. Um, so Squares is saying, I've seen yesterday the restored version of Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Cali how do I say it in English? Um, no, no, no. Caligari? Sí, yeah. Have you ever seen it? It's so flipping and it's 1920. No, no, no. I ha well, I ha I think I have. I haven't seen it in so long, but I didn't know that there was a like a restored there, there's like a remaster, a cleaned up version. And is it available online, Squares? So maybe we can check it out later. Mm. Cuando estabas hablando de la galería mm -hmm. en la que estabas haciendo pinturas que no estabas tan contento con ellas, sí. eh, Ignacio Casas pregunta 
tienen imágenes para mostrar de esa Uf. época. Y Uf. Gabriel Olmes pregunta, ¿y las vendían? Sí, las, las imágenes hasta me dan como pena. <risa> lo y... que pasa es que no, no representan lo que no, tú no. quieres como artista, digamos. Mm. Eh, imágenes de pronto debe haber por ahí, o sea, en internet tiene que haber por ahí, pero... Pero... Sí, lo malo era que se vendían todas. Eso era lo... O sea, suena estúpido decirlo, pero sí. O sea, lo, lo más triste es que todo ese trabajo se vendía. Todo, todo, todo. Entonces, es súper es difícil cuando, cuando uno sabe que uno está haciendo algo que no le gusta, pero pues que lo está vendiendo y que le están pagando a uno súper bien por eso, pues... Yo creo que... Por eso yo... O sea, no es, no es buscando justificaciones, sino, sino como diciendo... No, yo creo que yo estaba en un momento en mi vida jovencito donde me costaba todavía divorciarme o tratar de entender qué es lo que significa ser como... No exitoso en el gran sentido de la palabra, sino como empezar a sentir que podía, podía entenderme como pintor. Como qué significaba uno decir, bueno, yo soy pintor y soy un pintor pues, comercial, porque pues, yo siempre... Yo nunca he tenido problema con ser un pintor comercial. Para mí... So, hay mucha gente que se ofende con ese término y a mí nunca me ha molestado, nunca. O sea, nunca, nunca he tenido ningún problema con eso. O sea, mi, mi sueño era siempre poder trabajar y hacer las cosas que me fascinaban hacer para conseguir las bobadas que me gustan a mí en mi vida eh, a través de la pintura. O sea, nada me hacía más orgulloso o, o nada me hace más orgulloso y nada me parecía más increíble cuando yo era joven y todavía me, se me hace fascinante que haya yo podido hacer una vida a través de la pintura. Eso se me hace increíble. Eh, Entonces, Olgui, dime, qué pena. Olguita, tu mamá. Mi Olguis. Dice, eran extraordinarias pinturas no, y Olguis. yo soy artista. No, Siempre no han eran sido chéveres, maravillosas. No, sí, mi mamá es divina. Mi mamá es divina. Todo, todo lo que hago le gusta. Pero no, no eran chéveres, Olguis. So Callum says, could you maybe talk through how you section your palette when you work? Like where you mix lights, shadows, half, yeah. half tones to make your work coherent? Right. So I'm not the best at that, at that. So let's establish that. And I should be a lot cleaner with my palette. But the thing is, my own painting just lets me not be as clean as I should be. Because I just love grays, midtones. I, I love, you know, tiny hue changes in the midtones. So there's a lot of what I really, really enjoy about painting that I can access by having a sort of dirty palette. That is the truth. But ideally, there should be areas where you can sense that I'm painting lights, where you can sense that I'm painting midtones, where you can sense that I'm painting darks. And once I have like my puddles of you know, mid-tone, light, and darks, I can kind of shift those values, those, you know, and hopefully they're values that are close. I can shift those values and, and vary those values within a value range, like within the mid-tone value range, within the dark value range, within the light value range. I can shift those um, in terms of hue. So I can make some areas uh, more yellow. I can make I can make them pinker, a little more red. Uh, I can make them a little um, yellow green in here, like slightly yellow green in here. So yeah, so I just very organically navigate my palette. Is it super clean? Nope. Is it the best palette practice? Oh, for sure, for sure it isn't. Um, but it just, I think it fits my way of painting. And hopefully the, the, um, The justification for if it fits or why it fits, it's always like in my painting. You know, there's nothing, I'm not doing anything weird. It's just a piece of paper. This is just colors, no medium. So there's nothing weird. There's nothing kind of like exogenous to just color and color mixing and applying paint on a substrate. So, you know, you could, you could just, you could argue that the core of painting Even if it's a gray painting and if, even if it's a muddy painting, because I, I am a muddy painter, but the core of painting is what interests me the most. Just color against color against color. That's about it. Um, cuando estabas hablando de lo de las pinturas, sí. eh, Julio Melto dice, ¿no te gustan ahora o en aquel momento? 
Y en, y en ese momento también no, yo sabía que estaba haciendo pinturas, o sea, yo me convencía de que estaba haciendo pinturas chéveres, pero pues así que yo dijera, eh, estoy orgulloso de esas pinturas, no, no estaba tan orgulloso, la verdad. Por ahí me gustaban una que otra, en una que otra como que yo decía, bueno, me va a como sacar la espinita y voy a, voy a hacer la pintura que quiero hacer, pero era muy, era muy esporádico, yo creo. So, Squares, when he was talking about the Dr. Caligari, yeah, yeah. Um, they say Dr. Caligari has been restored in Italy by scanning the original few copies. Oh, I wow. Think, That's amazing. I think one is in Colombia, but I'm not sure. It's a mute movie made yeah. with a lot of expressionist painters and artists in Germany. There is a Blu-ray, but it's on M Moby and Har Har. I don't know what that is. Oh, I... D what is it? What, what was it again? Mobi, M-U-B-I. Y el otro es H-A-R-R. H-A-R-R. Mm. No son plataformas como... Yeah, maybe. I, yeah, we're not familiar with those. Um, yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, we're going to look for it. Mm. Imerick was asking... As a young artist, how do you get your work to be known, recognized, slash recognized? Uh, so I'll try to answer when I was younger, because I'm not a young artist anymore. Um, ah, so tough, isn't it? It's one of the toughest, most frustrating things in the world, because it's the same old story. It's as if, you know, what happens with any job out there that's, you know, that young people are trying to get, that they, you know, usually they... You know, the spaces that can serve as a platform for you and can share your work so that, you know, people that are collectors or people that are, you know, th that are just used to buying paintings um, th th so that they can see them. Um, yeah, they, d they don't. They see young people as liabilities. They don't see young people as being consistent. They have no idea where a young artist is going to be in a couple of years. If they are like, let's say you did a painting show and maybe, you know, four years into the future, you decide that you want to do like video installation or whatever. And um, those things, you know, really annoy galleries. Um, they that that kind of lack of consistency or or what they deem as lack of consistency. Uh, or what the market deems as lack of, of consistency. Yeah, they, they really don't like that. So it's always super tough because as long as they, you know, see you as a liability, they're never going to give you a chance. They're never, ever going to give you a good chance. So you're always kind of, um, your, your last, you know, shot is to always go to like smaller galleries or like smaller group shows and then maybe show one or two paintings. But, you know, I, I always kind of, you know, I'm always pissed off at that because they feel like usually the market and, and bigger galleries feel that that's how you should start. You know, you have to earn it and you have to, you know, go through the motions of this, you know, big machinery that is the uh, art market and the art world. And, the, you know, that sounds all good and fine, but like, let's say if you're doing a, a group show, if you're doing a couple of group shows a year, which is, you know, which is, I guess would be what people expect you to do. Um, if you go, if, if you want to be part of, um, of like a gallery circuit, a traditional gallery circuit, if, if you feel that you're, you know, that that's what you want from your, your painting and your work, but If you take part of these shows, like, you know, if you sell a couple of paintings in one of the group shows, maybe in the other one you didn't, like, you know, galleries are going to take half of that money. And, you know, how are you making a living? How are you making a living by selling a couple of paintings a year? And, and if you're not able to live from what you're doing, how do they expect that you, you know, that you treat it as something that, you know, it's like, oh, you're a mature painter now, or you're a mature artist now, or, you know, you're a young artist that has to be incredibly committed so that we can see that with your work. 
um, how do you do that if you can't even make, you know, rent? How do you do that if, if it doesn't help you just cover like the most basic kind of necessities of your life? So that's, I've always found that absurdly unfair, absurdly unfair, you know, in the art world. And, and usually that's where young people tend to be like, you know what, I'm going to do it with, you know, by myself or with a couple of friends and we're just going to, you know, rent the space and, and we're just going to do it in these smaller venues and this tattoo shop or in the skater shop or in this co in this coffee place. I'm just going to use these, these smaller spaces to show my work. But then you realize that, yeah, maybe some people are interested, but it's not as if those are like, you know, um, uh, launching pads for getting into bigger galleries. Maybe, maybe you'll hear a story, you know, the, the off chance that somebody was having coffee and they saw somebody's work and it's like, Hey, I, you know, I, I actually work at a gallery. You should go there. You should show your work there. And you, you end up going there and they, they tell you you're amazing. And you know, you finally sign with that gallery. Yeah, but that doesn't happen that much. I mean, if it happens, it's, it's extraordinary. Um, what usually happens is that you have to work with your, you know, you have to scratch your way to, you know, to the, uh, not, let's not call it top. Cause I don't think galleries anymore have to be, we, we shouldn't consider, you, you know, big, small, whatever, uh, size galleries. We don't have to consider them as the, uh, the only shot that we have. Um, I think that you know, sadly, we have to just really, really be super, super scrappy and just fight our way so that they, you know, we can get their attention. And once we get their attention, then we have to show them that we are a, like a safe uh, financial uh, decision, you know, like that they, if they are going to invest in us, it is safe to do so. And the only way we can prove that it is safe to do so is if we already have a market like galleries nowadays, they want to talk to you. If you have a market already, like if you have a proven market, if, if all they got to do is show your paintings and then the people that have already been like shown interest in your work, they're going to show up over there. So they don't have to, they don't do much of an effort. Really, and I'm sorry if I'm being like super critical, but but uh, I and I've been incredibly close to a bunch of of gallery owners, directors, curators in the past, and they're amazing people. But I also I also have to speak as an artist and as a painter, so I I don't you know those two things can live by you know right next to each other. I can still be friends with you know, people that have those jobs, but I also, you know, as a young, as a, as a person that was once a young artist and that had to suffer great, you know, greatly to find a venue so that I could show my work. It is not easy. It is not easy. And then people will say, well, it's not meant to be easy. You're supposed to earn it. Like that's how it's supposed to be. Like nothing is easy in life. You just have to work for it. And if you're good, you're going to be able to make it. If you suck, you're, you're not, you know, it's easy as that. Well, it's not as easy as that because the art world is super unfair also. Like the art market, it's incredibly unfair. So you're, you're many times going to see people that don't deserve to be there, you know, showing and exhibiting. And it's just that they, you know, they found some way to get in. You know, they found, they just, you know, they were just incredibly insistent and they found a way in. But that doesn't make them good. You know, that doesn't make them great artists. So yeah, it's a tough one. Now, having said that, having said all the, the tough reality part of, of how the art world, you know, behaves, um, nowadays there's so much, you know, there's so many other chances to show your work, um, that you don't really need anyone. You really don't. And, and this is not, I'm not trying to sound dismissive, but, but, um, but there's nothing wrong in saying. I don't really need other people. You know, I, I can try and do this by myself. Granted, you're not, if you're doing things by yourself, chances are, and you're not going to, you know, it's not going to be easy to get into bigger galleries. You know, if you start things by yourself and you, and you're trying to, 
you know, kind of be a very insular artist, um, chances are, you know, you're not going to be in David Zwirner's radar. That's just not how it happens, unless you're extraordinary, I guess. Unless, you know, these are, unless you're an exceptional, exceptional, you know, artist, which may be the case also. But the truth is, um, nowadays we have social media and we have tons of, of, you know, amazing kind of open spaces where we can say, hey, this is what I do. And maybe it starts small. Chances are it's going to start really small and it's going to feel super niche. I would say like what we are doing right now with you guys, it's like super, super niche. I mean, in, in terms of, of YouTube numbers, in terms of art numbers, oh my God, we are like insignificant. Um, and it still feels cool. It still feels okay. You know, it still feels like it can be a place where you can grow, you know, where you can grow from, where you can say things. Um, so those, those spaces do exist, you know, and, and I have to say, for example, those spaces didn't exist for me when I was starting out and I'm not complaining about it because I'm here now, but, um, but I also know that it was super tough. It was very different and it was super tough for me initially. So, uh, I'm not saying like, let's not complain. I'm just saying we have an ability to pick and choose now and whatever choice is, you have to commit. You have to really, really commit. It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. Like there's nothing about social media or having a channel or having an Instagram account or there's nothing about that. That's easy. You know, putting a, putting a painting up on Instagram doesn't mean you're going to sell it a lot of people feel it's like, Hey, I'm going to put my painting, uh, just DM me for the price if you're interested and that's it later. Goodbye. Like I'm going to do, I'm going to let my painting do the talking for me. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. If, if you want to throw money in my face, just DM me. Great. No, like social, you know, if you choose social media, there's also like a, like a dynamic that you can't really overlook, which is that People are going to want to see more and to know more and to feel like they have a different sort of access, you know, to, you know, an access that to you as a human being that, yeah, they, they wouldn't have had if you were just, you know, kind of showing at a gallery where, you know, they just have to show up in this building and this super nice wall space and they see your paintings, but they probably never see you unless they're going to like open night. Um, so, so yeah, so there are options nowadays. They're difficult. All of them are difficult. It's never going to be easy and, um, a lot of hard work, but I think, you know, again, I think we have those options nowadays and we should celebrate that and we should totally take advantage of that. So let me look for another question. Yep. Um, Philip Walker is saying, I'm a student and I use pretty cheap oil paints. When I mix a dark color, there is a sheen that doesn't seem to go away even after the paint dries. What should I do? Uh, what's their name? I'm sorry. Philip. So Philip, that's um, if I'm understanding you correctly, and maybe I am. Um, you shouldn't be worried about that. That sheen probably has nothing to do with darker colors. It probably has to do with oil paint and the fact that darker colors tend to be a little more transparent. They, they tend to be. That's not the case all the time. And if they are more transparent, that means that they have a lot more oil. So, for example, a lizard and crimson has a lot more oil in it than yellow ochre, for example, or than raw umber, which eats up your oil like crazy. So those spotty areas, you know, the irregular kind of quality that you'll see in a, in an oil painting, totally normal. That's totally fine. You're not doing anything wrong. That's why, you know, if you, if you try to read and, and it'd be cool if you, if you find, um, a couple of books where you can read about oil painting technique, but you'll see that that's why, uh, historically we do something. I mean, I did it for a little bit. I, I actually don't like it, but you know, we as, as painters, I mean, um, we did something that's called, uh, oiling out and what oiling out meant was that 
once a, a layer was dry, like let's say this was your first layer of painting, there's always going to be sunken areas. Sunken areas means that the oil has oxidized. Either your, you know, your substrate, so your surface, has been absorbing a lot of your oil paint, or you know, the oxygen in the air has actually oxidized your paint, or it can be an actual, or it can actually be the two things happening at the same time. What that means is that. Uh, because the drying rates of all your pigments are different, because all of these guys, all of these, they behave super differently, super, super differently. It's actually amazing, you know, if, if you buy paint from like serious paint makers and most of like the paint that you can get that's actually good, uh, they know what they're doing. They can like lower the prices just putting more fillers in or using um, pigments that are replacing uh, very expensive pigments, but they know how to do stable paint. But it's a it's an incredible science trying to stabilize each one of these pigments so that it they all feel consistent because they all require different ratios uh, from um, oil to pigment. So it's actually pretty fascinating. But what that means is that if you're using different colors, and which we all are usually, we're using like you know a, a white, yellows, reds, blue, umbers. Um, your painting is going to have different drying times, uh, you know, as a surface. And that's why you have to wait till all of that surface is like stable enough and has dried to then, you know, go in and do a second layer of paint. Now you have two options, uh, when you have this very spotty layer of paint, you can oil at, which means just putting a tiny, tiny bit of oil on a rag. And then you just, you know, kind of put a very thin, very, very thin, you can't just slop oil on top. That would be terrible for the painting. Just a tiny little film of oil on top of your painting. And because oil is glossy, um, it's gonna kind of make everything homogenous again towards the glossy part of oil paint. And that's a natural part of paint. So that's totally fine. So you could do that, or you could use uh, something that's called retouch varnish, for example, which is a synthetic varnish that does exactly the same thing, but actually dries very quickly. In about half an hour, it'll be dry. So yeah, so those are your two alternatives to, yeah, I mean, there's, are there more? I'm thinking about it. No, probably not. But those are your alternatives to get rid, rid, you know, quote unquote, of those kind of spotty areas in your painting. If you look at contemporary painting, dude, though, there's so many painters that don't give a crap about that. I mean, for ex I've seen uh, Neil Rauch's paintings, Neil Rauch. He leaves like sunken areas and glossy areas all the time in the painting and he doesn't care. He doesn't seem to care. So it's up to you. It's up to you if it means something super important or, or if you just, if you're just going to be okay by, you know, letting those, um, letting those little spots be. Was that, hopefully that was good. That That's a good explanation. I, I hope that, um, that you got some of that. Mm, Adrián Salazar pregunta, ¿crees que las pinturas que haces ahora y te gustan en pocos años no lo hagan? Mm, uy, pero difícil hacer ese juicio, ¿no es cierto? O sea, no, no sé dónde... No sé dónde estaré en algunos años, ¿no? Y no sé cómo será mi trabajo en algunos años como para como para saber si es tan distante de lo que venía haciendo que, que ya entonces entienda que los esfuerzos que estoy haciendo actualmente son, son como demasiado distintos a, a lo que es mi intención o lo que va a ser mi intención en ese momento. Entonces es di difícil como ver en el tratar de... Pues no estoy diciendo como tratar de ver en el futuro, al, el, al futuro, pues tratar de, de ver el futuro, pero, pero sí es como curioso... Es una pregunta chévere, pero, pero creo que es casi imposible de, de responder. Gabriel Pozo is asking, what do you think about the Dark Souls games? Ooh. I remember you talking about it a while yeah. ago. Yeah, I'm, I love them. I absolutely love them. Love them. I haven't finished all of them, if I have to be super honest. I finished, no, I didn't finish Demon Souls. Like I, I, The first one that I played was Demon Souls for the PS3. Um, and then I finished Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, I was at the end, honestly. And so I, I'm going to call that finished, uh, Bloodborne, I finished, um, what am I missing? Uh, Sekiro, I couldn't finish. 
you know what? You know why? Because I'm kind of scrubbish and I actually, I'm not good. I'm not that good. I mean, I know that if I say that I'm, I finished, you know, uh, Bloodborne, I finished Bloodborne and I finished um, uh, Dark Souls 1 and 2, then I should be, you know, I, I, I shouldn't suck. And Danny and I both finished Cuphead. So, yeah. you know, that's like, um, we, you know, we can wear that with pride. <laughs> but um, but I'm not that good. I'm just like, I, I just, I'm committed with stuff that I like. And, um, but I love um, co-op <laughs> in those uh, Souls games. I absolutely love it. So when I'm stuck with a boss or something, I'll just like, you know, I'll just call somebody and, and, and let them help me out. And what I usually do is that I, um, I'll just, you know, I, I, have you seen those like soul level one, um, um, those people that do the whole game at soul level one or something like, like crazy, I don't do that. I, I literally, I'm over leveled like everywhere I go and I'll just, you know, I'll just uh, repeat the same, um, I'll just grind and repeat the same little area for like 20 times just so I can level up and be over leveled so, just so that it can be a little bit easier for me. So yeah, but I adore the design. The feel of the game is just incredible. And I've been even watching some of the, um, some of the, uh, Elden Ring, because I know there was a network test and people have people a ton of people played the um, the network test, so I'm super psyched about that. I I already pre-ordered it, but those games I have to be careful with because I don't want to start playing them and then you know the moment that I have with Danny um, is the one that's getting sacrificed because I'm just playing and Danny's like super cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're super cool, but you're also super cool because because I'm a little more mindful about not you know, being an idiot about playing when we're, you know, together. I'd yeah, rather like I, I tell us you, play together. You can play and I can play my SpongeBob game, the <laughs> game in the phone while you play. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know what I've been playing, which is super cool for the past couple of days. I was going to say what? And I know. <laughs> inscription. Inscription. So good. It's so good. And I don't, I'm not good at it, but I'm, I, today I made the, uh, I, I'm at the last boss and he killed me, but, it's so amazing. I love visually. I loved it. It was incredible. So, so Lich, team, eh, Lich. Hola, Lich. Um, he was saying, "Ha ha ha! What happened? Did the old man beat you in the game?" I oh, guess, in when inscription. Did, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't know if in, if in inscription when you were talking about Dark Souls. Mm, maybe or because maybe. he asked a time before. Ago. Yeah. Did he ask it before yeah. I said inscription? Oh, oh, there was an old king. I, f I remember in one of them. Uh, or or which one? In Sekiro? Maybe Sekiro, maybe. But Leech is like really good at video games. So, yeah. So when, it, he's, good at, when he's good at stuff, I'm, I'm not as good as him. So, yeah, I just get, I'm not that good. I've never been super good. I'm, I've been able to finish games and I'm super proud when I finish games. But I like adventure games like Spider-Man game, like a Miles, uh, Miles uh, Morales game, or I actually did finish uh, Cyberpunk, I, but I played it on my PC, and I thought it was okay. I thought it was fun. You Lich know? dice Sekiro? No sé cómo se yeah, pronuncia. Sekiro. Yeah, that's a tough game. Lich, es difícil. No me joda, es difícil. And Squares says, there's people that do the touchless runs in Dark Souls. Yeah, that's insane. Runs without take a hit. Yeah, those, those are that's crazy people. Those people are nuts. But I'm going to flex a little bit <laughs> because oh. remember that I did something like that in Cuphead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Danny got a, an achievement that's like <laughs> uh, you don't get you don't get uh, touched uh, in in a level, which is totally insane for me. Like now, maybe people are gonna be like, oh, yeah. No, no, you're really that. good. No, no, no. <laughs> like I've played enough video games throughout my life to know that you're like super good at. at um, at platformers the you're, thing is that i don't know how to you're use like super the... twitchy and you you have like really great memory and you're very patient to like learn patterns which none of those things i'm i'm none of those things i suck at all of those things which are pretty much essential for <laughs> a ton of video games 
So yeah, but I need to get be better with the camera thing. Oh yeah, yeah, Danny with camera. But the thing is oh that I had a su super big mm, void. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I played um, DS. No, ¿cómo se dice? Yeah, or like no SNES. Sorry, yep. not DS. And uh, PlayStation One. And after that, I started playing with you. Oh, and I, and I had a Game Boy Advance, but that was all. And after that, I jumped into yeah, PlayStation PS4. 4. Yeah. 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 So that and was like a huge yeah. change yeah. So for Danny, me. So Danny, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's funny until you have to play with her. But, but, I, but I know, Danny, but I know how to times, understand my time. My, yeah. Like camera managed. Oh, now now you're better. But the first times you were playing with the uh, control, like yeah. that you were, you had to deal with camera. Oh my God. I've never felt like I have to puke in a game. Yeah. But the thing is that you assumed that I would know how to control the camera well, because you've been playing with the camera. I don't know, like maybe eight years. No. Well, more, but yeah. yeah. And that was my first time because I mean... When I was playing in the Game Boy Advance, there was no camera. No, no, Play no. Play one? Is... Of course not. I mean... No, no, no. No. It was uh, PS3, actually. Well, I don't no, know. PS2 play... actually has... No, because PS2 had the dual also. But PS... I didn't have a PS2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> but you, you've gotten a, a lot better. Yeah. No, I think that if I get the time, I could play with you sometimes. See, but the bad thing is with um with the Souls games, oh, it's, it's not co-op like okay. couch co-op. Yeah. You have to be like somewhere else. Yeah, and I can't. Well, but, but I, usually can you in the play Souls in the games, Switch? You, can, you play with strangers. No, 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 Only, none of those Souls oh, okay. games. No, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Lich this it. So Danny lives in two D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, but she's... but I'm learning. I'm yeah, learning no, because no, the we've games finished... that we. have For example, um, Sackboy. We finished Sackboy. Yeah. And we finished a SpongeBob game. The, oh, uh, we had the Platinum. The Kitty Bottom. That was, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my first Platinum ever. And I did it with uh, Danny playing a, the SpongeBob game. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else we played that had the um, uh, It Takes camera. Two? It takes oh, two. yeah, It Takes Two. No. That was fun. Oh, yeah, it had camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it wasn't super important. The camera work in there wasn't super, super important, but it had camera. But in Sackboy, in the runs that you had to make, remember that? Um, yeah. Yeah. That game, the, the tougher parts of that game are yeah. super tough. I liked a lot that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, but we were good. We got, I mean, we finished it and we got almost everything, so. Yeah, so Thomas Golunski is hey, saying. Hey, Tommy. He's saying Apescape on PS1 had 3D camera movement. Yeah, but I think that I just played when the ps was just released so i didn't get to play that game i remember i played the one um do you remember what you played on mm, your playstation maybe international superstar oh soccer? always that's amazing mm. international superstar soccer yeah okay, that i remember was terrible that was oh, worse than your no, goodbye no that was good mm. oh lich is asking have you to played Overcooked 2. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we fought. No. Yeah, we you, ended up fighting. You were super well, yeah. stressed. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you're just super disrespectful. Why? I don't... Well, I would ask the same question. Why? No, because the thing is that I was like, we should divide our tasks. Right. And Nicolas was like, when he stresses out, he was like in autopilot. <laughs> so he was just like throwing everything in the floor and he didn't wash the dishes or... He put the um, the food in the dishwasher instead of going to give it, like, go and give it to the people. So, yeah. Yeah. We and, had a little bit yeah, of an argument. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to own up to that. Oh, All of remember, that. I'm sorry. And I have to throw okay. you in the, throw you <laughs> under the bus for something else. Sure. Go ahead. Remember the, wor the worlds where you had to go to pick the food, like in the refrigerator? And it had like a timer, like a door that closed. I forget. Or it was like moving, something like that. Uh, there's a bunch of, yeah. of those levels you that move. You always got trapped. Yeah. So you had to give something and you were like, oh, I'm trapped. Uh, so you're you very couldn't stressful. cook. You're very, but the thing is, Danny, 
Danny, I have to say it. She's very good, <laughs> but she's also like like uh you start getting a little bit too too control freaky. A little bit. You have to admit. The a thing little is that bit. I follow an order. Well, yeah. And you so just, I'm sorry if I'm not following just, like, your order. And you just exist in the kitchen because <laughs> you're like running around and doing nothing. So I get nervous. I no, get super nervous. Yeah. Oh, and remember the the level that we had to run and the floor was like um, crushing. I think that yeah, it yeah. became lava or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but we almost on you our defense. Fell, fell. On our defense. I mean, you we almost like, finished that game. No, but you were like, you were like oh, right the, at the end. I have two dishes, and you were running, and you fell. Like every single time. So yeah, it was super hard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But super hard playing with you. Mm, a a little control freaky. Like your darker <laughs> side shows up until I'm like, okay, I'm not having any fun anymore. <laughs> this is not this is not fun anymore. I'm sorry. No, I'm because done. No, because I, I remember, am done. No, the thing is that I told you, like, hey, get a little bit more organized. But I in your life. No, but I always had like the same voice tone. You were super stressed. Oh, it's not about. The, I mean, you it's were not like, about your I tone. Did. It's I not. Did. At you least I'm expressing super... myself honestly. It's not no. about. It's not about your 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 voice tone. No, because I was like Nicolas. You could be like, I am going to kill you, <laughs> and that's like a super no, pleasant I was voice like, tone. Nicolas, please go wash the dishes. Nicolas, Nicolas, no, and you were like, I can't. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. You know what? Just like stop the game. Like, I'm going to go watch a movie. And I was like, calm down, Nicolas. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, now I'm exaggerating. But yeah. I was super calmed. Oh, yeah. And sure. you were like, you know, just we should turn off the the play and just play another thing. And yeah, yeah we never end the, end the game. No, but but we were close on our defense or on my defense, because I feel I'm, 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 I'm I sense I'm being attacked here, but I'm totally fine. <laughs> no, 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 I'm fine. I can defend myself. Um uh we 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 were at the last level i mean yeah. it was like the last world we and the last couple try. no 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 and like we could be using no nope. um nope. like noise canceling headphones oh so you yeah. and i Why? so we can hear what the other saying no, you could so probably hear my stress. screaming from the other room <laughs> yeah <laughs> um no 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 hi mary genueva says that that game is stressful. Oh, I, I <laughs> liked it, but I hated it. Leech says, I fought too. My, girlf my girlfriend said, I'm Chi Chef Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> and that we play Hell's Kitchen. So Danny is your Ramsey. No, Nicole. Yes. Mm. Yes. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. Mm. Squares says, when I tried to play with my girlfriend at Little Big Planet, we almost broke broke up. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we we actually did super well. Yeah. On the, on Sackboy. On Sackboy. We were a super good team. We were we were actually a super good team, the and the only is... reason we were a good team is because I was competent at it. And the games that I'm dumb at, that I'm not good at, yeah, she's ha she has a problem. Yeah, the thing is that I think we we are like a super good team for co-op games just not the cooking games not not the tough ones yeah <laughs> um gabriel pozo is saying things are heating up over games guys game <laughs> over <laughs> and no and we're playing now um little nightmares too. little nightmares 2 which but is really cool but we take turns beginning. yeah we yeah. and we take turns yeah 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 so mm. i have to draw i have to draw i give up like honestly, I give up. So I'm I'm gonna um I'm gonna try to draw it out just to see if I can help myself a little bit. Mm. So I'm trying to look for more questions. Mm. I know video game talk can be divisive. I know there's a lot of people that uh, are not into it, but I I love it. It's been part of my life. You know, it's the same as. Comic books or, you know, toys, statues, um, illustration. It's just always been part of my life, so. Oh, and sorry. We also um, completed the Super Mario, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's classic. Yeah, but we did it all. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. We're pretty good at it. Yeah. Well, again, you are very good at platformers. I, I, I have to give you that. Hmm. So 
And I, for example, I suck at, um, there were moments, there was a, well, one moment in, um, in, uh, it takes two that it's like a DDR game, like dance, dance revolution. Oh yeah. But oh I'm good God. at that. Yeah, you're, 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 very I don't good know what's that. wrong with you with that. I, I, that is beyond <laughs> anything that my body will ever know how to do. But not your body because we didn't it's my play. It doesn't matter. My body would Did be the same thing. Did you ever play the, um, the PS1 Do you Dance remember Dance when Revolution? we were playing Guitar Hero? Yeah. Do you, my body doesn't know yeah. how to, I can't follow <laughs> orders. I just can't follow orders. Yeah. I really can't. But did you ever play I that? I collapsed. No, I never played that. No, I no? never played that. I was super good. Yeah, I, ne I never played that. The thing is that I'm good with um, all the games like piano tiles, remember? Yeah. And you, you it's just... It's just that your brain is like... I mean, there's a difference between our age, but I've never been good at it. So you could say no, it's like I'm getting excuses. older. Yeah, I know, I know. But, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm getting older and I just don't have reflexes. And yours are like super, super sharp. But the truth is, I ju I've just never, ever been good at that. Ever. Mm, so, Tia is asking, I think you two are young. The games I was playing are... Um, how do I say? How do I say? Fatal? Fatal, yeah. Fatal Frame and Silent Heal. That's not... That's. I think that's kind of my age. <laughs> you know, I think we're contemporary, by the way. Mm, Squares is asking, what's your favorite comic? My favorite comic? Yep. Oh, you know that people in, in the UK, they usually ask, they usually, um, they usually have like a favorite comic, which is very, it's very peculiar, I feel. Um, let me think, let me think, let me think. Maybe the one that you bought? Um, comic? No, 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 but comic means uh, como comediante. Comic? Are you? Ah! Yeah, what are you talking about? Ah, yo pensé que era... No, comic. No, 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 I thought like it was a comic, comic like like a comedian. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, okay. I don't think it is. Maybe it is, but... Oh, comic as in my favorite comic book. Um, the one I don't know you... if I have... I mean, Hellboy is probably my, my, um, my favorite character in terms of the way it you know, it develops as a comic book, you know, in terms of the way the character just changes and shifts and, and, and especially the way visually it um, reflects upon just a passive time. It's just amazing. I, I think it's a, uh, uh, just brilliant, absolutely brilliant, perfect, you know, design. Um, um, but I don't know if, well, I don't, I don't buy comic books anymore. That's the thing. If you ask me like, oh, what's going on with Batman, for example, which I, I've always liked that character. Um, I just, I have no idea. I have really no idea. Um, I have to ask like uh, Willy, like Shaheen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have to ask him if he knows what's going on with that character or... Um, but let me see. But I, I can tell you my favorite comic book characters, like... You know, very traditional comic book characters. Batman I've always loved. Hulk I've always loved. It's just, he's so simple, so dumb. But I've, you know, ever since I was a kid, I've just really, really always loved. Um, yeah, aside from uh, Hellboy. Uh, anything Dave McKean when I was growing up, like Cages, for example, I think is a brilliant book, an absolutely brilliant book. Mm, what else? I mean, John Paul Leon doing Batman or doing Winterman or doing Earth X. Oh, my God. That was just, he's incredible. So absolutely amazing. I have a, I have um, a page. Well, I have a Batman that he did for me. Yep. And I have a page of um, the Hulk, of the Hulk issue, the of the Earth X Hulk issue. Oh, I always wanted that page. And, you know, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I I would love to own this. Like, and I'm, I swear, I swear to God, this is like super real. Um, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I love this Hulk. I love this kind of redesign, Hulk redesign that Alex Ross and um, John Paul Leon did for Earth X. And, uh, and I remember I had all the, um, I bought all the comic books and, uh, and, that particular issue, I was always like, oh, I would, I'd love to have this, you know, one of these pages. And till last year, 
I I would say this year. No, no. till this year. So was I'm talking it about this year. Yeah, it was this year. Till this year, I was able to get one of the、uh, pages that I've always wanted to get, and I just wrote the owner. I was like, "Would you consider selling this page?" And they were like, "Yeah." And I think they charged me like five hundred bucks, maybe, for that page.、Um, and I bought it immediately. I was like, it, "It's so awesome! It's so important for me to to be able to do those things nowadays." I know that it seems like they're just things, but for me, it's almost like things that I've always, all my life, I've always kind of dreamt of 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 you know being in the company of those things. To me, is super super important. Um, and I've always, I always thought that I could do that when I was a, a you know, I, I always thought, okay, I'm gonna, hopefully, I'm gonna be, you know, not successful, not successful, but I'm gonna have a job in the arts that is gonna let me, you know, kind of get these things eventually. And I never did. I never did. Like I was, you know, those things always felt kind of like beyond my reach. And、um, and it was. It was, it's amazing. I I think I'm like it's one of those things that nobody else has to be proud of me because you know it, it. I guess it doesn't matter to anyone else. It doesn't have to matter to anyone else, but it matters to me in the sense that I I feel like this is who I am, and I'm kind of working for the person that I am. So it's uh it's amazing. It's amazing not to feel kind of like that these things are so beyond your reach or so. Or, or you're just like, or convincing yourself that you're old, so you have to be boring, and it's like, no, you have to be serious now, and you know, it's kind of stupid to buy, like a statue. Like I got a statue yesterday. Yeah, a super cool. A dark side statue from Sideshow. Yeah, it's so. And it's、good. so fucking cool. Yeah. Like I can't, like it's just fucking cool. I can't express it any other way. But it's just again, it it took me a long time to to be able to say. Wow, these are the things that I that I think are super super cool. And a lot of people, I'm sure, are going to say, "Oh, come on, dude, they're things, and you're supposed to be ta- detached." And and it's like, yeah, but they're also things done by amazing artists. Like, if if we buy paintings, which we do, um, you know, why can't we buy like a sculpture that's super cool also? And why why would it feel differently, or why would it just mean something different? Like, it's the same thing. So. I'm just super happy. I'm just super, super happy that life has given me the chance to just pursue those things that escaped me for a very, very long time, and things that I don't know. I think even before Danny, I was just convincing myself that I don't know that my life had to be kind of responsible and sort of boring. And the truth is, like, I take care of my kids. Like, my kids lack nothing. I think that you know they're wonderful human beings. I feel. I feel you know doing a good job. With them, and、um, and I'm still able to do and and you know kind of have the company of the things that I've always wanted to have, and things that I love and respect because these things to me are like they're honestly they're just art. They're just literally like literally art, like super super cool art done by incredible people. So I don't know. I I that got a little corny, a lot a, a little、uh, personal. But it's just that I'm 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 very I'm very proud of those things. Again, they're you could just see them as stuff, and, but to me they they mean a lot more. It means that you know my I can be the person that I want to be. You know I can have the life that I want to have, and it's not about having like a billion dollars and just like you know buying whatever you want. No, no, no. It's just like working hard so that when you when you want to. You know, when you consider just、uh, getting something finally that you've always wanted, you can just look at yourself in the mirror and say, "You know what? This could be cool, and I'm not ashamed of it, and I think it's awesome." And yeah, so yeah, those things are cool. I feel.、Mm, Riley was saying, "I love that you both play video games. Do you only play Switch or PS5?" Uh, so we, we do have do. a Switch. We have a PS Five. We have a、um, Super Nintendo. Yeah.、Mm, and you play on your computer? Well, yeah, but I'm not. I'm not like a PC gamer. Just just simple games that I because I can't play with a mouse and keyboard. I'm really bad at that. Like I can't. 
it's the same thing. Like my body can't react. I'm just not good at it. So. So Panos was saying we were playing overcooked with my sisters. We ended up me and my bigger sister shouting to our little sister <laughs> because she was doing everything super slow. Oh, do you want this? Danny, reminds you, me of you should tell them about when I played uh, oh, Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, I was going to talk Pedro. about that because Nicolas was playing Luigi's Mansion, Mansion or Man Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, Danny yeah, mansion. didn't play it so with Fer, and I mean Fer is ten years old. So I played so... with her when she was nine ish. Yeah, 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 yeah. nine ish. Ish. So maybe she just turned nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was eight. I think I started yeah. when she was eight. And the other thing is that she she isn't like a frequent player. So no. so she's not that good with the controller. <laughs> she could barely get her hands <laughs> on the controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but let's start from the from the from the uh from the ending. We finished. Fer and I Yeah, that, that's what finished. I was gonna say because you we played finished. all the game. Yeah. We and you were like Luigi's Mansion. Stressed. Well, we almost like 100%ed it. Yeah. And you were like stressed, but controlled. But I remember that I went out a day to visit my family. And I wait, when I came back, came back, I was like, hey, Fer, did you end the game with your father? And she was like, oh my God, you should have seen him. He was like out of his clothes screaming because he was. Because, I mean, Fer couldn't uh, manage to do, do anything. <laughs> yeah, oh to do the things God. that she had to do. And Nicolas was so frustrated. So, But I pushed her so yeah. much yeah, but that she realized <laughs> she, had, she, she could. She could. She explored her own limits. <laughs> yeah. And she was yeah. able to do it. Yeah, I, yeah. Honestly, I helped her grow. That day, I think that game is going to help her be the person <laughs> that she deserves to be. Yeah, and I remember that she was like, the thing is that he was screaming, so I was blocked. Like, I was super blocked. I didn't know what to do. And so she wasn't a good player, and Nicolas was stressed. So, I mean, you could, like, you do the math. That would make her a worst player. So, yeah. No, no, no. She worked through it. It was amazing. Yeah. She had this the mental fortitude. She's not like me, because you break me down in you know in when we play together. Yeah, she's but Fer, a little bit so so much more stronger. Tough. So much stronger. So like every parent, I just want her to be the things that I could never be. But you can describe a little bit how like what was that experience? No, the thing how is it's a it? it's a tough game. It, you know, for I mean it's a tough game for uh for uh, an eight year old. Um For sure. I think Samu maybe would have done a little bit better when he was eight because he, he started playing when he was younger. Yeah, the thing um, is that he's interested in playing. Right. No, but Fer loves but her Roblox, own games. Like I she, mean, she loves Roblox. But because she can hang out with her friends, I think. Yeah, but have you seen have you seen her do some of the Roblox like challenges? She's like a beast with with like that virtual um uh pad on the iPad. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. I can't I can't, I need a controller, like a real controller. I can't do that at all. Um, no, she's, she's amazing now, but yeah, back then. But she was eight years old. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> come on, I gotta, I gotta, um, gotta push her. <laughs> mm. I, we're kidding, by the way. Yeah. Mm. She, no, in the end, she was like the proudest person that we, oh, yeah. That we were and able I to remember that she was telling me that she was laughing because you were so stressed. And you were like, don't laugh, just concentrate and <laughs> let that make her laugh a lot more. So, yeah, I would love to have been able to see you at that moment. Oh, you been probably so would have given fun. me one of those calm down calm, <laughs> and that would have made it even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Nicolas, calm down. <laughs> yeah. mm, so, uh, Thomas Golunski is saying, did you ever play Metal Gear? Nicholas. I played uh, four, started playing five, and I started with four, uh, Tommy, and which is a, the most fucking like arcane game that I've ever, ever been through. Like, I kind of know the story now because I've watched enough like YouTube videos to know the 
absurdly convoluted, you know, story that Kojima, you know, is known for. But um, but yeah, but I started with four. That was one of the first games that I played um when I got my PS3. Uh and um yeah, I just didn't get any I just didn't get it. I mean <laughs> I didn't get anything. But I was like, yeah, it's, it's a cool, you know, stealth game, so that's kind of cool. That's kind of fun. But I just, you know, it went completely over my head for sure. Mm, so Oh, so Sandy under the sea is saying my friend makes the clothes for the sideshow figures. She is amazing and no so way. talented. Oh, dude, that's yeah. incredible. I love I love it. We don't have I mean, I ha I'll tell you what I have, which is a little embarrassing, but I, I don't. I'm super proud. Why well, embarrassing? I have not. I have a bunch of Martin Canale who is um he's uh sculptor from Argentina that I think he's and I think he's amazing and he does like super kind of old school sculptures because he used to work with Sideshow when they were modeling like modeling modeling you know and um he was responsible for two of the sculptures that I had always wanted my whole life my whole life like ever since I was conscious of knowing about these sculptures which were a Hulk a, a Hulk comic cat and the Venom comic hit. And they're amazing. And again, only until last year, this was like years of wanting, you know, these sculptures. Um, only until last year I could do it. And they're incredible. The bad thing is that I I became aware that um, that I actually like these a lot. But they're also like big. <laughs> like my space, my workspace is now like a man cave. And it's getting kind of tighter and tighter. Uh, so, so yeah, but, but I, I actually showed Danny a video of this dude that did, um, a shirt for yeah. a Superman statue. Yeah, but he and, made the, the whole suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that shirt was amazing. Do you remember Danny? Because the, um, uh, the he shape of the shirt to the post, he had to fit it to the post. Yeah. He actually Oof, cut it amazing. so that when he was sewing it, it fit the pose of Superman just yeah, like yeah. opening his, you know, shirt up and you can see the uh, Superman kind of symbol in his chest. Um, it was incredible. Yeah. I mean, there's so many amazing artists out there that do so many different things. Mm. But yeah, that was amazing. I don't know if that's your friend, by the way. If that's your friend, oof, he's incredible. Mm, but Sandy was saying that her friend is a she. Oh, okay, okay. Well, all of, I mean, everyone that works there is amazing, I feel. Mm, so Luke was asking, have you ever met your doppelganger, <gasps> Nicolas? Yes. Well, not <laughs> met him, but I wrote to him. So, and I <laughs> showed he, him to Danny. He didn't wrote back. He, he wrote back. He kind of laughed. Did he so, wrote back? You didn't tell me. Yeah, tell, he wrote back. Uh, you didn't tell me? Yeah, but I don't know his name now anymore. No. <sighs> Let me so, see if it's here, but he's a, a photographer. So he's a Russian photographer. That dude looks a lot li like, eerily a lot like me. I mean, and it makes sense, Russian, you know, I have the Russian kind of body type. I am, you know, fair skinned, kind of gingery. Um, this dude looks exactly like me. It's it, it frightened me when I saw it. I was like, oh my fucking God, are you kidding me? And I wrote to him, I was like, hey, somebody, because somebody sent it to me. I, I, I was never aware yeah. of, the, of the guy, but somebody was like, oh my God, this dude looks exactly like you. And they were like joking. It's like, oh, is this your um, photography account? But the dude, you know, and this is what's kind of uh, bad about it. He photographs like, you know, I don't know. No, I don't even know. I don't bad. even know. I mean, oh, you it's ter oh, Danny, it's terrible. Yeah, but yeah, I know that you don't that. want to say anything, but it's like um, sensual photography, but not sensual. I mean, it's just you know, he just wants to photograph naked women, um, and he just puts enough filters in there just to make it look artsy. So no, no, you. Would, did, did you like the photographs? No, I didn't. What would you say if I had like 10 of those photographs on my phone? I wouldn't say anything because I wouldn't be with you. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, so, yeah. So, but, oh, that's, but he was. It's a shame. That's I the mean, dude. You, that's the guy. You two could have been like, because what? you're different. 
like looking a little bit different, but you could be twins. I mean, okay, that's. Do you know what what I'm trying to say? I not mean, not really. You look super alike, but like if your, mm, I was gonna say genetics, went in a different way. I don't know. Yeah, how that's to say not. That. Yeah, that's. No, but you get it. Like I mean, sometimes twins. You would say like, oh, of course they're twins, but they have something like a little bit different. Yeah. And that was that photographer with you. So yeah. And me? No. No, Danny. I've never seen anyone no. that sort of looks like you. No. I remember that some, like some time ago, a friend of my sister was like, "Oh, you look just like her." And then she left. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> oh my God! You look exactly like her. Goodbye. <laughs> and no, I didn't think she looked anything like me, and neither my sister. But mm, I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes people are weird. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know how um, when we when we post paintings that people tag their friends. Yeah, like. Oh, and, but that's super cool. We always and, look too. Yeah, and people are like, "Oh people. my God, Maria! This is this you. is so you!" <laughs> yeah. And we look at Maria's account, and we're like, "Oh my God, no, Maria!" But sometimes we we know why they're saying it looks similar because maybe it's not that I look like Maria, but the painting looks like Maria. If that makes sense. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Mm. I don't know why we picked Maria, yeah. but. Mm, Gravin Jiménez dice, hola Nicolás, saludos desde Barcelona. Saludos. ¿Has visto el juego para compu gris? Sí, es Gran muy lindo. Gran admiración por tu arte y por lo que hacen. Sí, es muy, muy lindo. Pero ese, lo hicier... ese no lo hicieron, fue como en... Me voy a equivocar de pronto. No lo hicieron, fue como en Uruguay o algo así. Es un... No es un estudio como de Uruguay. De pronto me equivoco, Dani, pero... A ver, miremos. Spanish developer. Ah, son españoles. Nomada Studios. Ah, sí. no, súper bonito. Sí, es súper bonito. Sí, y ahí estoy viendo y tiene unos premios. Se sí, unos la premios. animación de la protagonista, como camina y corre y salta, es súper ¿Sí? linda. Sí, Yo no es súper es super bonita la, la animación de ese juego. Ah, pues mentira, es que es súper artsy. Que... Es súper lindo. Sí, sí, sí. Creo que había visto algo. ¿Y yo por qué lo até como a Uruguay? No sé. Sí, su, además Uruguay, que hay como 3 millones de personas. Y va a haber un estudio. Pues obvio puede haber. Como... Puede, pero, pero pues... ¿Qué? ¿Qué tiene que ver? Lich dice Francia. ¿Qué? Sí, ¿son franceses? No, pero busqué y decía que un estudio español. A ver, miremos. Pues de pronto la persona que nos dijo... Yo creo que sabe más que nosotros. Sí. De pronto, a ver si nos pueden decir. Dice... Eh... O sea, no es gris, sino gris. Ahora, Lich. ¿Cómo, cómo? Gris. ¿Otra vez? Sí. No. <risa> eh... Eh, entonces, Graven, que es la persona que hizo la pregunta... Sí. Dice que Conrad Rosset, o Conrad Rosset, no sé, no. es el creador de sí. Nomada Studio. Además, estoy leyendo así, ni siquiera sé si... Es... Sí, sí, era normal, pero... A ver, miremos. Eh, Nomada Studio. Mm, no, Oye. no sé dónde es. No sale dónde es. ¿Cómo se escribe? Conrad. O Conrad. Roset. Mm, no, dice que tiene 37 años, pero no me dice dónde. Mm, gracias, súper útil. Sí. Gracias, Dani. Eh, terraza. A ver, es de terraza. Espérate porque ahora me estoy yendo. Terraza es una ciudad en España. Ah, entonces era Conrad Roset. Es español. No, no sé, Lich, por qué dijo francés. Lich. Sí. Lich, gracias Lich. Lich. Gracias por nada Lich. Sí. Sí. Ahora dice España, ¿no? Pues sí. Pero ya había dicho México, Francia. Brasil. <risa> Ahora um, dice canción de Proyecto 1. So, 
está en la wiki. Sí, España, por eso. Por eso Lich, pero ¿y, y Francia qué pasó? Eh, so Luke says, I found my doppelganger, but I fear he's no longer with us. Oh, he was dressed as a chicken in a photo from the 1920s. What? Looks exactly the same as me. Oh, oh, that's super like lost. Yeah. Remember? Or dark. Dark, yeah. No, and lost too. Lost? Yeah, no, rem uh, yeah, when they were in the island at the end, like yeah. at the end of the series. Series. Series, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, remember that there was like a picture of the people that were working there? No, I don't, yeah. I don't remember. Am I lost? Oh, uh, lost? <laughs> oh, my no, God. No, but, but I think it is. I mean, let me see. Um. So in the season finale, maybe? No, because they just... Oh, well, we're spoiling Lost for everyone. Yeah, so. sorry. But that's why I'm trying to be super vague. Yeah, right. Well, Lost was vague. So let me see. Um, no. I don't see it, but but I'm sure. No. What yeah, the Dharma sure. people? The yeah, Dharma? No, but but don't spoil. That's why I'm trying. No, to No, Dharma be is fine. If yeah. you say Dharma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they in were fact, in the Dharma, nothing happened with the Dharma people. That's the, that was the saddest thing with Lost. That it was so cool, and and then it just all the things that you thought were like, oh, this is so important for the story, at the end was like, okay, this was nothing. Like, none of this mattered. Yeah, no, look, I was right. This? What? The picture. Because they oh, realized that... That... The, that was at the time. Oh, but I know when that is. I know, I know. Yeah, but that's... that's... not at the end. But it was in the last season. I think, I think that's it was That's what I was saying, season. yeah. But yeah. that's where, where you realize that it's like a loop. Like well, a loop. not really. They just had the ability to travel in time that was all but yeah. they travel in time only to like that was when when the island was moving do you remember when the or when the thing was going off yeah yeah but i was right you didn't oh, oh remember. okay you <laughs> didn't remember about the um, the picture i mean yeah, yeah, yeah you didn't pay that much yeah, attention no, to the well, series uh, i'm the one that showed you this i actually have seen it like three times yeah And you didn't remember the picture. No, no. Because <laughs> so. it all, it had, like, the same thing happens all the time, which is, like, the the series started so well, and then it just, you know, it was, like, super sad that all of that went to hell. Mm. Squares says it was shining. I don't know if I, I lost the joke. Maybe. Hmm. Beshria says, have you ever been to any country in Asia? If not, do you plan to anytime? Oh, I would if, love to. If, um, if you invite us, we'll be there in yeah. a second. But no, we haven't been invited. I tried with, um, what are they called? Giac, I feel. And they do workshops in China. Do you remember, Danny, that I told you that? And, we, and I spoke to them for... A little bit. Yeah, I have the book here. Which one? The book, the book that you had. No, 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 no. This was different. Oh, it wasn't the same. No, I no, no, it no, was... no, no. No, this was different. Okay. Um, yeah. So they they do workshops in China. And do you remember that I was telling you that I was trying to to have them consider me for um for a workshop, mm -hmm. but they've done oh, they've done I workshops remember, yeah. they've done workshops with uh let me see with Nerdrum with Antonio Lopez because I think that they have like a Spanish tie also. Um, so they did uh, with Antonio Lopez, with Nerdrum, and I remember Nick Alm, that they also did a workshop with Nick Alm. And I was trying, and those are all better painters than I am for sure, but I was hoping that maybe, maybe. Um, no, didn't happen. Yeah. They, they told me that it had to go through a committee, that thank you, but not thank you. So... Talking about Asia, Beshria says, 
please come visit. I'd be so it'd be so cool. And where where so where are you? Where are they located? from? Mm. Um. So, Marciel says my drawing of Danny failed a bit. Shall I post it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to, if you feel comfortable, of course. And you can use the hashtag so we can see it tonight. Me well, if you finish it tonight, I'm not putting any pressure on you. So, um, Gil Robles is saying, were you in Max Ginsburg class when you were in the in New York City? Yes, of course, in SVA. Yeah, I was I was with Max for three years. So, um, Beshria is saying that they're in Bangladesh. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, we would love. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to go. Mm. So, let me see if there's any other question. Any workshops in Bangladesh that we can... <laughs> oh, that would be super cool. Yeah. Mm. So Luke was saying, having never watched Lost, it's funny hearing you describe it without giving anything away. <laughs> we sort of did. You but did. That's fine. Like, don't worry. You did. It's, I um... was trying my best to be super vague. Yeah. Mm. Honestly, it it's just disappointing. I mean, it holds up. There are moments that I think are, like, brilliant. Um, but then Dark, I feel, does what... Um, I mean, dark would have never happened if it wasn't for Lost. Yeah. I'll say that, yeah, like straight from the, you know. And also, I mean, the picture, the picture that we were talking about in Lost, I think it's it was like the idea for doing that in dark too. Oh, there, there's been a ton of movies that do that kind of tropey. But but you know, oh my God, they were there all along. But was Lost the first one to do it? No, probably not. Okay, so no, I mean, if you think about it, like your head, Sorry. my head. Yeah, this is yeah. my head. No, yeah, um, but it's I know, helping I know. a lot. So um, no, 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 it's like Planet of the Apes. You know, it's like kind of like the same thing. I uh, haven't seen. Yeah. Yeah. So I just um I spoiled it yeah, for you. Yeah, everything you ruined. Yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So. Mm, mm. I don't know which other movie, like time, like really old time, kind of. I'm 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 wondering which one. What what was the first one of the first movies to do like. You know, going back and forth through time. Maybe you guys can help us. So, Rad making a drawing. Yeah, well, at the beginning, we had the image for a little period of time being super big on screen. So, maybe... Huge. Yeah. <laughs> It was a huge Danny on screen, so maybe if you want to uh, screenshot it, Radog, you of course you could do it too. Mm. Oh, so Beshria is saying thank you, Danny, for not assuming anything and using they. My pronouns are she and her. Oh, okay, okay, Beshria. Mm. Tia is saying. Love the texture and the muted colors in your painting. Thank you. Oh, and talking about the like the time traveling, yeah, weird thing. Right, right. The, is that the Tim uh, Tim Robbins movie? How is it pronounced? Jacob's Ladder. Oh, Jacobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going super French. I was gonna say Jacob's, Jacob's Ladder. Ladder. <laughs> That's. What that's what I was going to say. So I'm going to say a joke and maybe people my age will get it. So Danny, when she's reading, she's like, oh, look, it's Italian. Fragile. Fragile. It's really good. It's from a movie. Maybe somebody, I hope someone gets it. Yeah. So once again, um, we're losing viewers, but 
Your fault? No, your fault. What am I doing? That terrible joke that you just did. The 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 fragile one? Yeah. It's super famous. So they're saying Nathan is saying Jacob's ladder is in my top ten. Is it good? Have you seen it, Nicolas? Yeah, it's a it's a super, super famous movie. We should see it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ananya says, how did you found, find out about Dark? I started watching it when you with your recommendation. It's great so far. Oh, it, it never, it's never not great. Yeah, and we've, we've found Dark. Like, Kal. Oh, Kal. Kal, yeah. yeah. Because we've, Kal. we've seen it on the like most views, most viewed here in Colombia, I think. Yeah. Or we would see it on the, just, we would open Netflix and it was there. But we were like, I don't know, what is this? And um, a, a painter, a really uh, fantastic, talented, uh, good painter friend of ours, he was like, no, 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 this is actually like super good. And honestly, we have to thank him because it is probably one of um, uh, Danny's and mine's um, most, I, I think, I really think it it's could the- be our favorite. It's my favorite TV show ever. Yeah, me too. Or or series? Yeah, it's a series because I mean, I I sometimes think of TV as something yeah, different than so Netflix. Yeah, it was so good. So but, so um, good. But I just thought it was it was even like the ending, and people were like super um like annoying with the ending. With the ending, yeah. But um, I loved it. I loved all of it, and the only thing that I hated was that you know, um, dark wasn't part of our lives anymore. Yeah. Mm, so Tia. Is saying, when's your next live painting? I got to go soon. Uh, that would be Monday. Yep. So we'll Monday, see you guys on Monday. 2 p.m. Eastern time. Or? Yep. Or 2 p.m. GM minus 5. GMT minus 5. GMT, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm, Agustín Torri dice, escribo en español, pero pueden responder en inglés si quieren. ¿Conocen Argentina? ¿Han venido? ¿Qué otros países de Latinoamérica les gusta? No vale Colombia. Eh, yo conozco. Dani, creo... Tú... No, yo no he ido a Argentina. Sí. Yo conocí Buenos Aires, eh, Bariloche, conocí Ushuaia. Mm, me, falta, me falta uno. Porque fue como ruta al sur. Hice como toda la ruta hacia el sur. Eh... No, fantástico, pues, ¿qué, ¿qué va a decir uno de Argentina? Es lindísimo, lindísimo. O sea, precioso. Eh, conozco también eh, Brasil. Yo no, y me encantaría ir a Brasil. Sí, muy lindo, muy lindo. Eh, Yo he ido a Venezuela. ¿Colombia el más bonito? Sí, pero dijeron que no se podía Colombia. Ah, sí, pero pues toca... Sí, yo estuve en Caracas sí. hace mucho tiempo. Eh, de resto, no. ¿Tú has ido algo más? No, en mi familia, por ejemplo, Tacha nadando iba a... Um, fue como a, a Bolivia, Ecuador. Me gustaría ir a Perú. Sí, nos falta ir como a... A Perú, sí. Y a comer a a comida se... peruana, qué delicia. Pues... Uy, sí. Nicolás. Allá le dicen comida. Pues sí, pero... <risa> Uy, fatal. Sí, pero no... No, de resto no he ido nada. Pues lo más cerquita, pero ya no hace parte de... De la pregunta sería Panamá. También he ido a Panamá, pero pues Panamá ya no es... No es Sudamérica. Era no Colombia. Es... Sí, por eso dije ya no es. Era nuestra. Hace muchísimo tiempo ya no es. Eh... Mm -hmm. Oh, so Riley yeah. was asking, Nicolas, is there still a Kenyo community chat on Telegram? Um, I think there is. Let me check. So I'll check this real time. Because uh, I would think there is. I haven't been there in a while. Let me see. Start. What? So I'm out of. <laughs> I'm out of Telegram. What happened? Let me see. Seven. 
I'm checking. I'm checking. <laughs> Code. Oh, come on. What is this? Oh, I don't know. What is going on? Yeah, this is great um, live streaming. Yeah. Now I'm supposed to get like um like a message to get into Telegram because I, I I guess I haven't been in there for a long time. Is it not up? Maybe maybe uh, Thomas knows. Well, Thomas for sure probably knows. But um, yeah. Because I don't know, I, I was um, logged out and I'm trying to log in and it's not letting me, so. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the painting because of course we've done everything but uh, talk about the painting today. <laughs> but, um, oof. Tough one because I, you know, I, I gave up on my, um, my hope to, to only by, you know, using my background and cleaning my, my, um, my contour up a little bit. I was hoping that I can get uh, my notion of drawing from that. And no, I realized that I, I was getting way, way too lost um, by using just masses of color. And it could be for many reasons. I mean, it could be because I, I don't give myself enough distance from, you know, me and the painting. Or it could just be easily um, expressed by saying I'm just not that good. <laughs> I just I just think it's um, it's very difficult to um, to figure that out uh, because drawing is difficult. So. So, yeah, so I had to like draw and scrape and draw and scrape. Like I said, I'm a super scrappy painter. I think that I trust myself in the sense that I feel that I eventually get to where I want to go, but it'll just take me a while to get there. The, the, I'll say that the good thing about uh, the fact that it takes me a while to get there is that the accumulation of all the decisions that I take, um, gives the painting like a beautiful sense of history and um and texture so you know when when you kind of look at the when you kind of acknowledge the texture that's that's part of the painting i think the cool thing is that that texture is not uh something that's you know where, where you're just trying to give it a superficial texture but it's a texture that happens because you're searching and there's something beautiful about that and so and there's something about that that you can't really um emulate or you can't really um kind of call upon when you're painting it either happens naturally or it doesn't so i'm very happy that it that it happens or when it happens it's annoying because the fact that it happens means that there's a lot of struggling going on but um i'm totally fine with that if it means that in the end or, or reaching the end, uh, you're going to eventually start to notice that there's um, this kind of beautiful buildup that is helping the way form is um, is expressed. So, yeah, it was... Fuck. It was... Do you need it? No, no, okay. no I have others. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, so, uh, it was, you know, it was it was tougher than I thought, or it's been tougher than I thought. For sure, and there's just like a a beautiful sharpness to this drawing to this edge that um that I just I don't know I think it it had so much character that I I thought I was losing it by by just you know trying to get it through color and um, I did my best I mean I could have just labored over it uh, and just tried to go for it but um but I I sensed I was getting a little too lost and and I was like okay you know I'll I'll take the uh, I'll take the loss on this one and uh, let me see if I can help myself uh, with with some drawing marks, which in the end is fine. I mean, nobody ever has to know how you do your painting. Ideally, your painting, the way you execute your painting makes sense, you know, in the construction of the painting. It kind of echoes or it's being echoed during the construction of the painting um, so so that there's no divorce between your intent and the way you solve the painting but um 
but I think struggling is a valid way of uh, of executing a painting also. So nothing wrong with that either. So Squares was saying nobody loves Guyana and Suriname in South America. But Guyana and Suriname, I mean, they are South America, but... But they're not, because they are under the French rule. Yeah. So... Well... But you yeah, could but say the same thing about us under Spanish rule no, or yeah, yeah. Portugal. No, because or they Brazil are until Portugal. this yeah. day. So. Yeah, but yeah. And that's also because when you watch a map of South America, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but they're never mentioned. Well, it should be there. As yeah, a map, yeah, yeah. it should be there. No, because no, I was looking for and and they are not. In Like in a big majority, well, I don't know why. But. Yeah, no, no, but they, I mean, they are... I don't I don't know what they're called like I don't know what that is called. Um you should wiki you should wiki that. Is it something like maybe Curaçao with but, the Netherlands? But it's like but or... they have like a very specific name. It's like off I I I forget what they're called like it's almost like what uh Puerto Rico is to the US. Yeah, so um, So so I'm trying to quickly read about it. But it should be like in the first paragraph, like mm -hmm. Guyana is a territory, no. like an off. No, because it says it Guyana and Suriname, along with French Guyana and Trinidad y Tobago, share many geologic, cultural. So no, that's like yeah, no, that's not that's not what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Is that the first page of yeah? Movie? Yeah, because it, it also says Guyana, Suriname, relations refer to... Suriname, I think it's... Oh, Suriname, I'm sorry. Refer to bilateral relations between Guyana. But, so that's also not what we're looking for. Um, so do like a super, you know, ignorant one, but do what is Guyana or what is Suriname? And maybe... Uh, No, it says Suriname is part of a territory in northeastern South America known as the Guyanas. While Suriname and Guyana are countries, French Guinea is a territory under the French rule to this day. So So they are separate countries? They're considered separate countries? Yeah. Well, that's what I get from what I just read, so... Mm. Yeah, but I've never been. No, me neither. Mm. So, um, so Jens was saying Europeans can just move to French eh, Guyana mm -hmm. since it's European Union. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's why I was saying the like the french rule it was not like oh we were we were like hispanic rules yeah but if they're saying territory if because i think that that's that was the word i i was kind i think of... it's a french territory no but that's they were saying the but you read that it wasn't a french territory that's a country hmm. because i know that's that's why i use the example of curacao because in curacao is part of the Netherlands. So. Right. Mm. Yeah, but it's always weird. Like, do they get to vote, for example? Yeah. For example, because do you know that... I think uh, in Curaçao they can. I think so. Yeah, but we don't know. Yeah. Well, well, I think because I was there. I know, but... So I recall maybe asking this to someone. But yeah, I'm not sure. So yeah, you're right. I'm not sure. Uh, Van Sant says it is a French territory. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Square says France Guyana is really France, but Suriname and Guinea. ¿Cómo es que me diste? Suriname. Suriname. Pues así, aquí es que se Suriname, dice Suriname. Por eso, pero no sé en inglés. Pero yo creo que ese es el nombre propio. And Guyana are independent. Mm. So. Uh, Thomas Golunski is asking, are you streaming with your Sony? Yeah, yes. yeah. How is it looking, um, 
Tommy, how, how's it, you know, I'm, well, part of it would be the camera. Our lights are not great. Light setup is not great, but, uh, and I'm sure our, our internet is not amazing, you know, when compared to the internet that most people use for streaming, but how does it look? I know the video once we once it's uploaded it looks good. I think it the act the you know if you were to check the video once it's uploaded it actually looks pretty good. I would say it's pretty similar to in terms of quality Danny than yeah, yeah, yeah. to the uh, ones that we upload yeah. directly. Mm, Ananya was asking how come you guys are streaming today just curious because you guys weren't yesterday. No, yesterday we couldn't. Danny had a few appointments, so we just couldn't make the uh, scheduling work. But uh, no, but we're doing it today. That's uh, that's the plan always. When we can, we're always going to do it. Jesús de la Osa pregunta, Dani, ¿has dibujado pintado a Nicolás? Eh, no, creo que habíamos dicho antes, yo hice como un dibujito chiquitiquitico tuyo. Una sí, vez me durmiendo. acuerdo. Dormido, me acuerdo, sí, sí. sí. Pero no, no. En el futuro de pronto. Lo que sí. pasa es que Nicolás no es muy de super, posar para sí, fotos. Soy súper inseguro. Como que no. Que, que además es súper injusto porque pues. No, pero... pues pido el favor, o sea, no exijo nunca, pero pues pido el favor que la gente me pose. Pero yo para posar soy terrible. Como que soy muy inseguro, creo. Pero en el futuro. Seguro en el futuro. Lo dibujaré o pintaré. Uh, so Rosalind says. Una escultura tuya, tuya me encantaría, mía. Uf, Se me da super pero. Lindo. En coquito. En coquito. Pero. Mm, ¿Qué? Se me dificulta más. Es que yo igual siento que yo no. No, es que no, no quiero que se parezca. O sea... No, 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 no. Pero es que lo que pasa es que siento que todavía tengo que. Como hacer muchas más esculturas para sentirme como de pronto un poco más segura con la escultura. Pero mm. algún día lo intentaré. De pronto mm. hago una escultura tuya. ¿Qué fue el...? Pues que... que... que uno nunca se siente seguro, yo sí. sé, pero... O sea, si, si uno espera para comenzar, si uno espera eso para comenzar, pues uno nunca comienza. O sea, uno nunca va a sí. estar... No, yo... pero pues digo, es por lo menos como volver a hacer... O sea, volver a tallar o volver a, a hacer esculturas, sea en arcilla o en lo que sea, como para volver a tener el feel de eso. ¿Sí me entiendes? Sí. Sí. Entonces, el próximo año seguro. Uh -huh. Confirmado. No, pues... Va a ser la primera escultura en el eh, no, porque entonces stream no. de Año Nuevo, que estamos invitando a todos. No, a ver, ¿el de 60 horas? No, 24. <laughs> Empecemos con 24. So, Rosalind says, I think you guys always look and sound good in these lives. Oh, oh so awesome. that's super cool, yeah. Mm. So, Beshria is asking, do you think it's possible to build a career as an artist with little to no academic training? Um, for sure. I, I mean... Uh, ben Bjorklund, he's self-taught. So that is the one thing that, if you need to know one thing about Ben, it's just that. He's self-taught. He never went to art school. So, you know, enough said, I guess. Oh, and when you asked about the quality of the stream, mm -hmm. Erika says, it looks very clear, good. Oh, okay, good, good. Mm. The only downside is that when uh, Samu and Fer get here from school, they know that they can't use the internet. Oh, and we have to disconnect we're, also. Yeah, we we're our like, phones. you cannot use the internet. Yeah, but it's just for a little bit. Yeah. Mm. That's what we tell them. Uh, so, Gil Robles was saying, I asked about Max because I remember you mentioning it another 
it in another video I watched some time ago. I thought about it as I looked at your palette. I just realized you don't have the white in the middle separating the warms and the cools like most of his students. I just thought it would be funny to mention. What? That's a new thing. I've never seen his palette with the white in the middle. I mean, at least not when I was studying, for sure. The white was always to one side, I feel. Oye, ahorita, es que no sé si Samu, Samu estaba gimiendo. Eso suena rarísimo, Nicolás. Bueno, estaba, creo Pidiendo que gritó, ayudas. creo que gritó, papá. No, no creo porque él sabe que estamos transmitiendo, espérate. Pero mira, mira, a ver, es que creo que hizo como papá. ¿Era eso o una vaca por ahí sonando cerca? ¿Qué tiene? No, no te estaba llamando a ti, pero que tiene como una como un sapito en la boca. Ah, bueno. Entonces, ah, pero ahí estaba remedio. Viajando. Sí, ahí le dije. Que ahí había. Eh, pero no, no te estaba llamando. Um, so I was trying to look for the for the palette. Maybe if the palette of Max was online. I think there's videos of him. Hopefully not pizza or salad no, yeah. videos. No, I'm not gonna open a video again. <laughs> no, just just turn the uh before before opening it turn the uh Oh so Hill was saying I had Max in high school, so maybe that changed. Okay. Do you guys have any other questions that you would like us to answer? Um, it's so weird. No, no, no. I'm just uh, accommodating. Um, it's so weird that I, I thought I was going to do a painting, com a completely different painting from the one that I ended up painting. I mean, it's not good or bad. It's just is it's like that's just what happened i guess but uh yeah but sometimes it's frustrating like it it bugs me when i think i'm gonna be able to do something and i just can't do it i just can't pull it off and i guess that's again i guess that's fine it's totally fine but um it's annoying though so Mm, Marcial says, Nicolas, what's your take on Russian paintings? There, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about like, um, um, uh, itinerant painting, you know, Kramskoy, Shishkin, Repin. Um, they're incredible. They're absolutely incredible. Uh, so if, if seen through the, the lens of like 19th century painting, they're absolutely amazing. Some of the best paintings that you'll ever see. Um, I mean, Levitan and Shishkin are just absurdly, absurdly amazing um, landscape, landscape painters. But um, what's weirdest, I guess, about uh, Russian painting is the fact that there are institutions that have sort of perpetuated that way of working. I mean, the Repin uh, Institute it keeps, it's still going and it's, essen it's essentially teaching the same thing as 120, 130 years ago. So that is fascinating, I feel. That is absolutely fascinating. Um, is it education that I think is, you know, should be done in, you know, 21st century. I don't know. I, but I think it's, it's amazing that there's still a space for that. I think it's, um, it's incredible that they've decided to just, you know, freeze time and, and just keep, um, offering the same, you know, essentially what's the same philosophy that has, that was, uh, present in, you know, in their institutions, um, a hundred and years a hundred and twenty years ago. So that's that's pretty remarkable, I feel. But um, in terms of the historical historical context of, you know, again that sort of painting when seen, you know, um, 
as a painting that was also quite different from from like Eurocentric painting that's quite dominant in in every conversation when you speak about um, 19th century painting because because of French Impressionism and post Impressionism. Um, yeah, it's it's fascinating to find uh, these examples of of just remarkable artists um, that. You know, when I studied, I only got to know of them because of Stephen Max, Steve Azell and Max Ginsburg. But this was not at all common knowledge, not at all. Um, nobody in in our painting history uh, courses taught taught or spoke about them. It was like 19th century was just um, dedicated to um, to a, again a very Eurocentric way of understanding painting. So I'm I'm super grateful to Stephen both to Stephen Max that they you know they made an effort and they took time to show us that there was other painting going on at the same time. So yeah, nowadays it's it seems more ubiquitous to know about them, but I could tell you that 25 years ago it was very very weird to um to have conversations about you know Kramskoy or uh, Repin. So yeah. Very, very grateful to to both of them that they decided to show us their work. So, Thomas Galunski says, "Have you seen the thing, the movie?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. haven't. Well, I know what the movie is. Yeah. But I haven't seen it. And he also asks, "How many paintings don't end up as you imagined?" Oh my God! I think probably ninety nine percent of them. And I was talking the other day about this, uh, Tommy, but it's uh, that's probably why that um, the um, the Andre the Giant painting, you know, strangely became a painting that that was, you know, that I understood as different, not better or worse, but just different, for the sole reason that that um, that I felt that I ended up painting what I wanted to paint, like almost like exactly what I wanted to paint. And that felt incredibly foreign. Like that felt like, oh my God, this is like a miracle. Like I, I was able to paint the painting that I wanted to paint. And you would think that that's, that that's what painting is supposed to feel like, right? But I don't know, it, at least not for me, not for me. So Roslyn said maybe my numbers are just not good. <laughs> maybe other painters can can say that sure, you know, that happens more often than not, but I'll say not for me, not at all. So Rosalind said, since you reference a Christmas story. Oh, there we go. I fully expect a leg lump <laughs> painting. <laughs> I should, I should. <laughs> I should. Mm, Ryan is asking could you explain how you use your palette knife? Um, I don't think, I, and I think I've spoken about this in um, in some of the uh, videos that we've done, but I don't think I use it as a um, as a way to apply paint, uh, in as much as as you know, traditionally what you would see. Let me see. I can grab. I don't know. There's no almost no paint here, but traditionally what you see is like people just putting paint down and then moving paint around a little bit um, since, but for me, it's become like, a, I don't know, just, I, I don't know what came first. I don't know if, if the, um, the fact that I was, I, I chose to use paper or, or the fact that I, and, and that paper had, uh, you know, immediately had an immediate impact on the way I painted uh, or the fact that I've always been, you know, kind of interest in um, interested in in just the regular edges and and lost edges and stuff like that. I think it's a marriage of both. But the thing is, this is a very strange surface to scrape. I can tell you right now, it's very very strange because, and I kind of have a hang. You know, I've I've kind of developed a hang for it. Like I can kind of tell how it behaves, but not really. Honestly, not really. Um, because many times I'll think I'm gonna I'm about to scrape something, and what I end up doing is lifting the paint up, and and you can see that in in 
many many moments of the painting where I'm scraping and then suddenly whoop, you know, accidentally I start to lift the paint up. Uh, that means that at some point, paint does um, get absorbed absorbed by the paper, but there are other points where it just kind of you know still remains at the surface. It it, it almost like hovers at the surface. And I don't think I've been able to identify that moment precisely. So what I do is when I feel that either my edges are too sharp or, you know, the um, transitioning between my brushstrokes was just too, um, maybe, uh, what do you call that? Like staccato, like the, there is no transitioning, but it's just, it just feels like individual strokes for some reason. Um, I try to, you know, blend it, but also lose edges, but also kind of mush, the, you know, mush everything up mm, with this, with with the uh, palette knife. So it becomes more a tool that, um, yeah, that is that is closer to an intent to find or 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 a a willingness to try and find the right relationship between you know, brush stroke and just a softer mass. And then, you know, for example, this is very sharp in, in the bridge of her nose, softer, the tip of her nose, very soft here. Cause I, I realized, I think I had it sharp here for a long time during the painting. And that sharpness here and here was just way too much, at least for this painting. It was just, I, I think, um, and the fact that it's kind of the head is turning towards shade, but remember the face has to turn this way. You know, there has to be something that is telling us that the face still turns. Like it, it this is not like a flat edge of the world. You know, it's not like Baron Munchausen goes up to here and then I, I forget what he does there. I you know I don't know harpoons the moon. I forget I forget what happens in Baron Munchausen when he gets to the edge of the world. But anyways. It's not like the edge and then it falls off. It's It has to turn. So when I was getting it a little too sharp, I was like, ah, oh, that's not good. And that's why I was, I, I've been struggling so much to try to find the right relationship. I, I think that at some point, attempting to get the right relationship becomes more important than likeness, for example, you know, which is sad when you're painting somebody, but it's also a good sacrifice when you realize you're making a painting. So I'm actually going to go for the earring. Should be should be simple enough. Those are my last words. And um, and I think we're going to call it done because it has like, um, this has like a scruffy look that I actually really like, I feel. But let me get, um, let me do like a cooler light on the top of the head, which is kind of nice. It has to be a little bit lighter too. So can I ask some questions? Of course. Maybe. Okay. Of course. Of course. So raw dog. No, I need silence. Yeah. No, because I, I didn't know that maybe you wanted to describe what you were doing. Oh no no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, raw dog says, Nico, do you think that the process is like hundred percent important to make a paint? Many times I use different processes, and sometimes. It feels like it makes a huge difference, but many times I feel like it's just a different path to the same result. Do you feel the same? Or um, when you use different processes, do you get to different results? I mean, that's kind of what we've been doing for the last two years, which is, you know, hoping that by changing the variables that where you start from, that you're going to be able to explore, you know, things about your painting that perhaps you didn't know about, or perhaps, you know, you were shying away from, or you were avoiding. And just by forcing ourselves to, um, to, to work, you know, based on those or, or starting from, from those, you know, foreign, um, uh, kind of building blocks, then, then eventually you're going to, you know, find something different about your painting, something that you really didn't know about. And I 
I don't know. I, I don't know how to answer that. I feel that in in for me at least in this during this exercise, I've found that many things that it's kind of surprising that many things in my own painting remain the same. So it's actually super, super interesting because there are things that I thought were going to be affected, but you know, a lot of things just kind of remained exactly the same. You know, it didn't matter if I was changing my palette. It didn't matter if I was making a drawing at the beginning. It, none of those things mattered. It, it, it was, I always went back to, what I understood as, as you know, um, my way of understanding painting. For example, it has a lot to do with this, you know, kind of grayness, moody atmosphere. I think that part of my painting showed up tons of, you know, in tons of ways and um, in many different, you know, instances of, of our uh, project. And that became my constant. And I mean, superficially, there are going to be exercises that, um, demand like very specific ways of solving something and maybe those feel a little bit different. You know, those paintings may feel a little bit different than, than other paintings. But in reality, it, the difference is just, you know, when you look at the whole paintings, like like the all of the exercises as one, they all feel like together. They all feel like they are part of a bigger kind of endeavor. So I guess that that would show, that would prove that, you know, maybe the what we think that is so different is actually very small when, when, you, when you have enough distance between yourself and what you're doing, the differences are minimal. And, but what you're left with is your kind of essence as a painter, I, I guess. And that's the one that, keeps repeating and that's the one that you can sense okay this is a constant in my work and that's kind of cool i feel so yeah i hope i hope i answer that it's a tough question to to try and answer so and bashria was asking how do you know when a painting is finished um i'll try to stop if i'm not annoyed I'll, I'll like, I'll say, okay, this is good. If I'm not just terribly annoyed by the painting, if there's something bugging me about it, you know, if there's something that I just, I'm looking at the painting and I just can't seem to, to, to think, okay, this is not important, but I just, you know, stare at it and it's just looking back and looking back and it bothers me. It bothers me. It bothers me. I, I'm get, I have to do something about it. I really do. And um, and when I reach that point where I'm like, okay, this is getting somewhere, then I don't know. Then kind of following the painting becomes easier. Like following the uh, the direction of the painting. Like your painting is kind of telling you, okay, we had a bad bad start, but you know, if we follow this kind of route, then we're not gonna have that much trouble anymore. Um, I feel that that's something that I, I'm very open to while I'm painting. I'm, I'm really, I know this is, I'm not speaking as painting as a sentient thing, but I, I'd like to believe that that's when, you know, you're listening to your painting and you're not just painting for the sake of painting, but you are, you know, you're trying to, um, acknowledge that it, it can't just be you, um, imposing yourself over your own painting. Uh, that would make a, at least for me, that would make a very boring painting for a, bo for a very, very boring painting, so. Riley was saying, Nicolas, any future plans to show at Gallery Nucleus? I live in Portland. Oh, no, we did have that show with, uh, with Ben that was super, super cool. Um, the idea was to be able to show a bit of work uh, with Ben, that was always like a, like a really, a dream of mine. I I respect them so so much, um, but no no plans. Um, they wrote to me, they wrote to me. Or they, well, they've written before, and I've just haven't really been. I don't know. I haven't really committed to anything. But um, in Sugarlift, they wrote to me from Sugarlift today. 
which is a nice gallery. It's a it's a nice space in New York. Um, that's where Zoe Frank just showed, and my friend um, Tim Wilson shows uh, there. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, I don't know what I want to do. Like I I'm gonna first try and figure out what my work is going is going to look like or feel like um for the next year and then i'll commit to something because I, I feel like if i commit to a show and i don't really know what i want to do um i'm gonna distort what i i'm gonna distort the things that i hoped that i learned from um from this uh process i feel um because i'm gonna rush into just having a show but I'm gonna to talk to them. It'd be nice to to have a show in New York. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can talk to them and maybe maybe I can just tell them, okay, let's do 2023 and you know somewhere in 2023, and that can give me enough time to to just figure it out. I guess that's the honest answer. Um, estaba buscando preguntas de antes. Sí. Y Jesús de la Osa dice, ¿qué se te hace más difícil pintar? Eh, ¿Qué se me dificulta? Como edificios, sí, sí he hablado mucho de eso. ¿Carros como decías? Pa los paisaje urbano, también. sí, paisaje urbano. Todo lo que tenga pues, como una esencia de perspectiva así, como súper mecánica, sí, sí. Pues es que a, ustedes han visto cómo pinto yo una figura con hacer, deshacer, hacer, deshacer. Eh, y ese proceso de hacer y deshacer, pues en, en una, cuando uno está tratando de resolver perspectiva, pues tampoco es que sea muy, como muy coherente, pues se puede, obviamente, pero, pero sí, no, creo que se me dificulta y no, no es, no es mi fortaleza, si debo aceptarlo. Estoy tratando de buscar más preguntas que de pronto me las haya saltado, pero por ahora no veo. Bueno, no, perfecto. Sí. So I want to hint at at the um at the little earring. I don't want to just just draw. Well, I kind of I made it sharp, but because I I need that light to feel sharp, but I want to make it so sharp that it's just you know this earring that jumps out and and uh, and becomes something that's uh more important than what it should be. I feel so. Trying to reach like uh like a midpoint between it being painting it feeling like a like a bit of the painting but also uh feeling different and sharper than you know moments of the portrait so eh hace como yo creo que dos horas <laughs> no, hay una pregunta una pregunta de hace dos horas pero es que Ay, hay momentos la negligencia. no es que hay momentos que se no. llena de preguntas y luego hay momentos donde no hay tantas. No, pero linda. Entonces, no esperemos podemos. que... Así no se puede. Así esperemos no se puede. que William Felipe siga acá. No. Eh, y él estaba diciendo, estoy tomando clases de pintura con Lu. Estamos Uy, viendo... ¿Con monstruo. Luisita? Sí, monstruo. Ah, estamos viendo la paleta de Zorn, pero me cuesta ver cambios de color, entre paréntesis, hue. Sí. En una misma área de luz o sombra. Mm, ¿Alguna difícil. recomendación? Mm. Espero que William Felipe no, siga acá. No, William ya se va a dormir hace rato. <ríe> sí, no. Pero pues igual... Confírmenos, William, si está, si está por ahí. <ríe> ¿Y si no nos respondes? Si no, no. No, <ríe> no mentira. Eh, no, pero es que sí está muy difícil. O sea, sin molestar. Está... Ahí está, mira, dice Uy, acá William. estoy. Jaja, aquí, no aquí, me presente. <ríe> Eh, primero, qué chévere que esté tomando clases con Luisa. Luisa sí, es una, Luisita es una artista dura. impresionante, una pintora impresionante. Ella es como, o sea, 100 veces el, la pintora, la, no, no sé qué estoy, cómo, ¿cómo decirlo? Yo sé lo que estás tratando de decir, o sea, porque ella te lo he oído. 100 veces más. A la edad de ella, ella no, incluso, es incluso 100 yo creo, veces la pintora sí. que yo llegué. Y yo a veces lo digo como a la edad ser. de ella, como por, por contextualizarlo. Pero no, Luisa es mil veces mejor que yo en mil cosas. O sea, Luisa es una artista impresionante, impresionante. Sí, es eh, impresionante. Dani y yo no, le, no, no tenemos sino solo un respeto enorme por, por y ella. Y cariño. Sí, sí, la queremos muchísimo. 
Eh, entonces se me hace fantástico que esté con ella, aprendiendo con ella, porque seguro es una, una profesora también eh, increíble. Ahora, lo de, uf, lo de encontrar como variaciones pequeñitas, pues tiene que ver sí con pintar, o sea, con, con el hecho de mezclarlas, pero también verlas. Entonces, de pronto, de pronto mmm, vea que mi profe, mi profe Steve Assel, él, él nos decía que no nos estaba enseñando a pintar, sino a ver. Y eso suena un poquito como cliché, como, ay, no, pues es que el artista, el pintor ve el mundo distinto. O sea, se vuelve un poco medio, medio romántico, tonto ese, esa descripción. Pero yo siento que es verdad, o sea, yo, yo siento que mmm, no quiere decir que veamos el mundo mejor ni peor, pero nos estamos fijando en cosas que seguramente, y estamos aprendiendo a entrenar la mirada eh, a cosas que, pues, la gente que no pinta puede pasar toda la vida entera sin darse cuenta de esas cosas y no, no importa, no pasa nada. A nadie le importa si algo es cálido, frío, si algo es neutro, eh, o sea, eso no va, a, no va a afectar en la vida cotidiana de nadie, pues en, en ninguna medida. Entonces, eh, yo creería que esa es la parte que se le está dificultando. ¿William es? Perdóname. Sí, William, William Felipe. Sí, William. Esa, esa es la parte que es difícil. Yo, yo no creo que sea la parte de, de pintar. Pintarla eventualmente cuando uno la ve, cuando uno logra reconocer, no es tan difícil, le prometo. No es tan, tan difícil. O sea, incluso tiene muchísimo más sentido cuando uno logra verlo. Pero pues toca ir paso a paso. Toca es aprender a, a, a entender que cuando decimos ver es como... ¿Como a desglosar sí, los planos grandes, pues, más o menos? No, y, y, en, y relaciones funciona. de color. Porque sí. pues él, él también está refiriéndose sí, como a, pero me refiero a variaciones de... Del hue, sí. Pero me sí. refiero como que si uno ve... O sea, uno en, un, en el día a día ve, no sé, o sea, si yo veo tu chaqueta, digo, tu chaqueta es gris, pero si la estoy viendo y la estoy como tratando de fraccionar, pues veo todos los cambios de temperatura por cómo le cae la luz, por la sombra, por todo. Sí, Como sí. por eso decía, tratar como de desglosar lo que uno entiende como un color sólido. O, sí, y, y, y eh, construyendo desde lo que dices, de pronto uno empieza a saber cómo la luz cae sobre los objetos y no los objetos. Uh -huh. sí. O sea, no es tanto acerca de el objeto, sino, sino cómo, la, o sea, cómo la luz está describiendo ese objeto. Sí. Eh, y, eso y... termina siendo como mucho más importante que, que, que uno pensar en, lo, por ejemplo, en lo que tú estabas diciendo, en chaqueta. O sí, sea, uno sí, no sí. piensa en chaqueta, sino en luz. Y lo mismo que creo que también ayuda un montón es cómo no pensar en el color que uno diría que, o sea, digamos, si yo digo tu chaqueta es gris, como no pensar en gris, porque entonces pues el primer impulso es hacer una pasada grandísima de gris, sí. y eso hace que después se dificulte más como ver todos los cambios chiquitos de temperatura eh... en el color, ¿no crees? Pues digo, o sea, estoy diciendo lo que a mí me funciona, no sé. Sí, no, 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 tienes, tienes razón, como en el sentido de... No creer que uno sabe de qué color son las cosas. O sea, eso también es súper chévere. Uh -huh. Entonces, es más o menos lo que decías de que no porque yo esté pintando, eh, por ejemplo, un blue jean, o sea, un sí. jean azul, entonces saco el azul, Exacto. mezclo azules. Porque pues si está dice, en sombra, pues yo no lo voy a estar sí, viendo o azul. hay veces, dependiendo de la condición de luz, puede haber amarillos Exacto. y puede haber grises y puede haber nada, o sea, lo que sea. Puede ser, puede ser cualquier cosa. Entonces, ¿cómo acostumbrarse a no... a desconfiar de lo que uno cree saber acerca de las cosas y empezar a observar? O sea, empezar a observar muchísimo, muchísimo. Y esa parte es dificilísima porque, pues, obviamente va en contra de la manera como nuestro pensamiento se ha formado. O sea, todas las cosas que nosotros creemos saber son con base en experiencias, experiencias propias. Y entonces es súper difícil de repente decir, bueno, esto que yo creía saber, pues ya no es. Porque ahora cuando observo, eh, la observación directa me está como arrojando otro, otra noción de, de cómo entender ese estímulo de, de la realidad. Entonces es súper bonito, es súper, súper bonito. Pero ese también es un camino largo 
pero además súper chévere y además muy personal. Entonces, no se, no se afane William, eso llega, y más bien goces ese momentico donde está tratando como de, de descubrir todas esas cosas que, que la verdad son súper chéveres. Eh, Gabriel Pozo preguntaba que si Beltrán, sí, sí, él sí, está Luis. hablando de Luisita, sí, sí, de Luisa sí. Beltrán, perdón, es que pues nosotros estoy cariñosamente... de cariño, sí, a decirle Luisita. Sí, sí, a Luisa la conocemos desde hace mucho, mucho tiempo, eh, y no es Luisita como por pormenorizarla, no, 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 por Dios, ella es enorme, lo que pasa es que Luisa es chiquita, es como Dani es muy petit, entonces... Eh, sí, es, es Luisita de cariño. Y creo que todos los que la conocemos y la queremos mucho le decimos Luisita, pero pues es de solo, solo cariño por ella. Mm, so, Squares was asking, which painter of the past you could the most love... You, you could the most love see a streaming? You, like, you oh. would love seeing a streaming of? Oh, uh, could you... Me I... I would love either uh, Velázquez oh. or Rembrandt, for sure. Yeah, they were saying, Squares was saying Van Gogh should be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, can I say, I was, um, I was at the Met and they have some um, sunflower, they have a sunflower painting there that's usually surrounded by a lot of people and a lot of people take uh, photos of that painting. Um, and I've always, you know, I've never liked those paintings that I feel like I feel I have more connection to those paintings because I've seen them in in like reproductions. Uh, maybe? Yeah, in reproductions or in um, uh, mugs. Yeah, or, yeah, or that's what I meant with reproductions. Yeah, or, like uh, mouse pads. <laughs> right, right. It's <laughs> it's like you've seen them so much yeah. in in other places. In that um, that has had like a, a tremendous impact in how at least for me, how I particularly see them. And uh, because of COVID and because they they don't let a lot of people at the Met, in at the Met any, you know, right now, I was there. I wasn't like planning on on staying at that little bit of that um, uh, 19th century European wing for for too much. I, I actually like a little bit more the um, the the American painting section, or at least the paintings that are in the hallway. There's a really nice kind of big hallway at the Met that has um, the uh, the Joan of Arc of Bastien Lepage. And, um, well, that one was still there. They've moved the other paintings around. And they have the uh, Maisonnier. And those are amazing. Those are incredible paintings. But I saw the um, the sunflower painting, and I was like, wow, this is like no joke it's a great painting like it is an incredible painting um and it's really nice to to be able to because i don't think for years i've been able to appreciate that painting but just because there's so many people always and it's so crowded and it's so it's just so annoying to be there around that painting that you just you know you start hating you know not the painting but just what it means to be around that painting Um, and, and, uh, I just had time with that painting, you know, this, this little trip that I did and it was incredible. It was really, really incredible. I was, I was shocked. I was really, really surprised. So, so yeah, so, so it would be, it would be fascinating. It would be a ton of fun to see him paint for sure. Yeah. But I think it, it I mean, in my brain, just the, uh, simplicity of, of, um, Velázquez would be amazing that i think that would be one of the most remarkable things in the world and i'm sure i'm sure that he would make it look like it was nothing so i'm sure that even looking at him i would have been like oh this is cake like yeah i could go back to the studio and paint this only to then realize that it was just impossibly difficult to um to replicate and rembrandt just to see how he pushed paint around i feel that He's one of the most fascinating artists in the in the sense that, um, you know, he's he's in many ways a, a Baroque artist, and like many many other Baroque painters. He was Dutch, so he's like many other Dutch painters. Um, but there's something just fundamentally different about the way he moves paint, and um, I would have loved to see that because I don't think anyone has ever understood that 
or has been able to replicate it ever. So it would be, yeah, it would be a treat for sure. They're asking, um, what's your favorite Velázquez? Oh, you know what I, you know which painting I love? The Forge of Vulcan, I feel. Yeah, I really like that painting. But it's, it's super hard to pick a painting, I feel. But yeah, but I, I've always, always loved that painting. Gabriel Pozo pregunta, ¿Nicolás ha conocido a Desiderio? No, no, personalmente no. Pues conozco la obra de él, eh, eh, pero no, no lo he conocido. Conozco mucho de lo que también habla. Él es, él es brillante, él es brillante. O sea, eh, es de esas personas que... Yo, la verdad, yo siempre me describo a mí mismo como... Yo tengo un nivel de sabiduría y es como una piscina, pero es como una piscina para niños así súper pandita, súper pandita y ya. Pero, pero pues también sé cuando uno está enfrente de personas que son eh, muchísimo más inteligentes que uno. No, pero y que es ven... que piscina pandita. Yo soy una piscina pues pandita. Yo un charco, entonces. <risa> <risa> Entre los, dos no, entre los dos nos llenamos un balde sí, para el baño, no, linda. Si se va el agua entre los dos, sí. se fue el agua. <risa> Toca orinar en el lavamanos. Bueno, ya te fuiste. <risa> sí. Para la muestra, para la muestra, un, mi nivel un de... Un botón, ya ibas sí, a decir sí. no. Para la muestra, un comentario sí, que, de que denota perfectamente sí. mi, mi capacidad. Tu incapacidad. Eh, no, pero, pero de Siderio, sí, la reflexión que hace, de, la reflexión que él hace desde la pintura es, es una cosa infinitamente más compleja que la que yo hago. No sé si sea mejor o peor, o sea, lo, lo chévere es que en el mundo no tiene por qué eso significar que, que entonces ese tipo de pintura es más elevada. No, no, pero yo, yo he aprendido a que pues, ese tipo de pintura pues, es distinto y ya. O sea, es, la realidad es que es simplemente distinto. Pero, pero sí es fascinante oírlo, oírlo hablar. Tiene como un, una manera de contextualizar la historia súper bonita. Con una historia además personal y con una especie de mística y una vaina y rarísima porque hay pinturas de él que son súper crípticas para mí. O sea, que incluso muchas veces las, entiendo, o sea, las veo impenetrables. Entonces, de nuevo, de pronto esa es como mi, mi mente sencilla, que se le, pues como que me pasa por encima como ese tipo de narrativa, de, de retórica, pero, pero bueno, pues ese es el pintor que yo soy, honestamente. Eh, voy a dejar ahí. So, I'm going to leave the painting here. I think it has a nice kind of roughy, rough look to it. Um, I feel it's very... Uh, Croyer-esque. At the beginning, I didn't want to say it because I was like, if I fail miserably at this, then I'm going to sound like an idiot. Uh, but um, I, I, there's a couple of uh, Croyer portraits that are profiles that I absolutely adore. Uh, Danny, could you look for one? Yep, sure. So Croyer, K-R-O-Y-E-R, Croyer. Uh, and... Um, Anna Anchor I think the Anna Anchor one is super cool so Croyer Anna Anchor portrait and it's a profile wait oh the, the, the one that, that the one that's oh sorry in the, no 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 this one no no yeah, yeah that could be that could be cool too that's a yeah that's a cool one but yeah you're not well you're not wearing a big floppy no but this you know, was the one that you wanted me yeah, to yeah, yeah. show yeah, okay. yeah yeah there's there's a there's a bunch of you know, um, uh, profiles that he did, but, um, so it's totally different in, in, in terms of, of I mean, paint application. No. Don't worry. Don't worry. No, no, no. I was going to ask you if maybe you wanted. No, that one's, that one's fine. Okay. So yeah, yeah we can, we can just use that one. That's totally fine. But, um, yeah, so it's totally different in paint application. Croyer is an absolute genius. He's, he's an enormous painter. Um, you know, a million you know, miles away from, from the painter that I'm ever going to be. But, you know, I, I always have in my mind, like, these these incredible painters and, and these particular paintings, just to have, like, a, a sort of um, path that I, you know, I, I know I'm never going to be able to travel down that path, but I know that, um, you know, that at least they're showing me the way 
you know, that they're showing me the possibilities, the, the expressive possibilities that are, you know, amazing. So I had that in mind. I, I knew that I was going to do a very gray, very moody painting because that's what I wanted to paint. Uh, when I feel most comfortable, that's my go-to. And, you know, if I'm painting Danny and I have no specific intent of doing uh, something with color or if I'm not working, you know, in an exercise that demands of me to be um, to be dealing with a, a different pa different palette or different color relationships. And if I can just, you know, work with my go-to palette, nothing weird, nothing, you know, no surprises, I, I, I guess, um, that's, this is where I go to. I, I, I immediately kind of fall into this space where there's grayness and I just absolutely, I've said it before, I'm like a pig in mud and I just swim through all these like um, muddy tones and I feel totally fine. I feel super, super comfortable there. Um, I I was able to integrate some of these little spaces, interstices between uh, brush strokes, which I really like to leave uh, because they speak about the paper. So you can see them here, here, in the neck. I think it's very nice. Um, there's a couple here that I left. There's that because I just, I didn't want to make that edge sharp. Uh, I think that the sharpness I wanted here, but I didn't want the sharpness to come from way up here. Uh, much rather come here and then down and then bits of sharpness like in here and here. I thought that was in terms of edge work. I, I thought, oops, I thought that would be uh, really nice. Um, and in terms of, of painting, I love the um, application. It's really scratchy in some areas, very, very scratchy. Part of the reason is because I'm using like a softer um, a bristle brush, like a hog bristle brush. So uh, let me, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it is soft. Like it'll deposit a ton of paint because that's what good bristle brushes do, but it's softer. Um, so it behaves very differently from, from the brush that um, the other brush that I was using that was a synthetic one. Uh, so there's very nice variations of texture. It's incredible how this surface allows me to get a very thin veiled surface, thin paint over here, very kind of nice brush strokes like the one coming down the, um, the bridge of the nose, very scratchy, almost like dragged, a, a, a dragged surface. It feels like that's, uh, you know, you could argue that that's the result of, of many layers of paint and, you know, it's still a, like an Ala Prima session. This is very nice too. There's softness here, a little bit of more impasto here. So um, brush, like the brush stroke variation, I'm super, super happy with. I think this, there's an essence of Danny there. It's not quite, an, it's not quite what I saw in the photo. That That's what kind of bothers me. But once I'm divorced from looking at the photo and I look at my painting, I feel, I feel good. I feel happy because I feel Danny here. Yeah. So I, do I you, do myself, you feel, yeah. yeah. Do you see yourself? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. That's always very comforting. Um, so, so yeah, so those things I think um, helped a lot. But yeah, but the painting is going to be completely different than my brain. But this is where we ended, and um, I think it's okay. I think it's uh, it's it's okay to be. It's okay to to know that many times that's going to happen. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have a license to do whatever the hell you want. But it means that you have to deal with new variables and, you know, you have to kind of figure out how, what your role is in this painting that it's almost developing, you know, outside of you. Um, you know, when when do I push back and when do I say, no, 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 this is going to the, towards the wrong direction. I want to control it more. And when do you just say, hey, there's super nice things happening here. I'm just going to navigate this um, and uh, let's see where it takes us. So. I think my painting is always like a mixture of both of those things. So I think today was like a clear example of that. So, um, yeah, so that's going to be it. I hope, I hope you guys liked it. I hope it was a good, uh, good Friday 
Good Friday live session. So if there's any any comments or questions just to uh, finish it off. Yeah, so um, Kevin McGivern was saying, awesome Hi, to catch you live, Nicolas. Awesome, thank it's you. It's late here, but I'm not going to bed until you finish. Oh, dude, awesome. I hope you, did, I hope you didn't log in like two minutes ago and I'm like, <laughs> so I'm done. <laughs> Bye, everyone. I gave you time to uh, post that comment, and then it's like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Good night. Um, no, but thank you, thank you so much. Awesome to have you here, even if it was for a little moment. Great. Raw Dog says the painting looks amazing. Thanks, thank Danny you. and Nico, for helping us. I really love this channel. Oh, thank if you. If I post a Danny painting too, what yeah. hashtag should I use? <laughs> you um, could use hashtag Danny ha can't sing. No. <laughs> Hashtag, okay, yeah. Hashtag, hashtag Danny, Danny can't, can't sing. sing. Hashtag, and hashtag our Danny painted lives. Painted lives. Yeah. Hashtag our painted lives. And hashtag Danny is good at cuphead. <laughs> yeah. No, but you can use hashtag our painted life so we can see. Hashtag it. Danny is the cute one. Hashtag Nicolo, Nicolo. Look, look, gaggle, gaggle. <laughs> Nicolo. <also>. Goggle. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Yeah, Mike, let's leave it at that. Yeah. What? No, let's leave it at that. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I was not going to fix it because I'll ruin, ruin the joke. Something's happening with my <laughs> English today. Yeah, it's leaving you. Yeah. No, but it's super hard. You know what's hard? When you have to go Spanish, English, Spanish, yeah, English all the time. Yeah, and that's the thing because yeah, yesterday I was with my family for a little bit. And, of course, I was not thinking in English at any moment. So, yeah. now for, I'm for just... Me it's, for me, it's difficult. Yeah. Like the... If if I have a workshop that's enough time that I can speak in English, like it's it's better. But um, but if I have to go back and forth, yeah, it's always gonna. No, I'm always gonna get like expressions weird. And, and for me today yeah. has been terrible. I feel yeah. like I try not, to say not, something. Not in your A game. And I feel yeah. that I have the yeah. Simpsons. <laughs> Let me talk. The yeah, Simpson terrible. monkey <laughs> clapping in my head. Yeah, that's me today. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I have to deal with, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I because mean, in in I Spanish, mean, no, I mean, in Spanish, I'm better. Oh yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. The monkey's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um. Now, yeah. So they were saying thank you too. Awesome. Mm, wonderful. Gracias. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Turning in. Awesome. Um. Thank you both so much for this. I did a quick sketch with you was fun to join you oh shade also if you want to share it i mean no pressure but if you want to remember to use the hashtag hashtag oh, Radog, Radog just Girl. typed hashtag danny is the cute one hashtag hashtag yeah, <laughs> Jen, 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 so just copy <laughs> just copy paste with raw hashtag dog uh, danny did. can sing in hashtag her painted life there we go those are perfect <laughs> Um, Rajita says, this was super entertaining and beautiful painting. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you everyone for joining yeah, us have today. Have a good Friday, whatever that means. If you guys are going out, just have a, you know, go have a great time. Yeah. If you, if you're not going out like us, yeah. <laughs> go watch a movie, go watch something kind of cool. Go watch. Uh, go the, to sleep. If you guys are going to sleep, go rest. Go yeah. watch the documentary that I Which told. One? That I the one that I suggested, everyone. Oh, yeah. Dear oh, Zachary. it's Friday. Come on, it's Friday. Don't ruin the weekend. Zachary. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a good one if you want to. Yeah. I hope everyone has a uh, has a great time, whatever that means for everyone's life. So we'll see you guys on Monday. Love Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ooh.